just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. That's right, it's our inaugural could be anything show. That's right, the CBA inaugural could be anything show. We've got our kid here. We're uh, we're look. We're looking for the next big thing. We're looking for the next big thing. Uh, and you may be looking at us with your binoculars at your uh, TV screen. Just wait to get me a magnifying glass. <laughs> there we go. Yep, there's an absolute gun coming through the ranks. Uh, you may be looking at us going, wow, these boys are looking hot. These boys, and it's probably the first time you've ever said that because it's 100% not the truth. But have a look. We'll go to Guru first. Guru, what are you wearing, mate? I'm hot and heavy, mate. <laughs> Very hot and heavy. <laughs> I think this is your best kid ever. Well, that's our best kid ever. That is right. We're doing the first ever bloke guru uh, collaboration drop next Monday at six pm. Timmy, what's going on, mate? You're looking like you are looking like a pure scout through and through. Feeling like a scout, Kempy. I'm very comfortable right now. My head uh, is being massaged by pure comfort. I'm looking over at Hammy, and he hasn't taken the covers off his binoculars, so I don't know what he's scouting, but I can't imagine it's much. I was, I was going to say, at the time of recording, uh, future not looking too bright for the West Tigers, but um, <laughs> maybe, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. We're making the eight. We're making the eight. We're making the eight. Yeah. He's also got a little lug in his left nostril, which needs to be sorted. <laughs> okay. He'll sort that off camera. Off camera, of course. Yep. Actually, we'll give him a better look. I'll give the, give the, the dribblers a better look. Here we go, boys. Hey, girls. There you go, nice model. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, what'd you say about my hat? <laughs> <laughs> my choice. My choice. Then I blind you, I blind you with the jab. Monday, 6 p.m. could be anything drop. <laughs> Limited swipe. Looks good. Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh this boxer could goodness. be anything. This boxer could be anything. All day made that camera. Gave it to it. Did I lose or win that fight? You won that fight. You look like you're ready for the uh, for the vault card on the weekend. The vault card? Yeah. It's looking good, the vault it card. Is. But we'll get into that. We'll yeah. get into that. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been your best eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, look, the things I do for the Rue. There you go. That might sell an extra few hundred shirts. I hope so. Yeah, that we will. hope. Uh, now, just with the shirts, another announcement. All merch going forward, it's just gone up a level. So we brought on a new. He was actually a part of the bloke community. His name's Lockie. He's an absolute legend. But it's actually his job to design clothes. His job. So when you get these, you're going to open the package. It's going to be all different. You're going to see. It's going to be way higher quality. Plus, this shirt is actually designed specifically by Lockie. So the cut, everything like that. We give him a bit of inspiration. We say, you know, we want this, we want that. Obviously, there could be anything, the bloke. But even the material is like super, super high quality material where, trust me, when you get it out of the package next week, or sorry, before round one, you're going to be like, wow, this is much different to the normal bloke shirt. So... Next Monday, 6 p.m., massive shout-out to Lockie too. Jeez, he's a gun. And you should see some of the stuff we've got coming up uh, this year. It's unbelievable. Um, so next Monday, 6 p.m., you will get them most likely before round one. So it, you want to see, you might get them before round zero, but you, we most likely will get them before round one. There is a limited supply. There's a limited supply, guys. So once these are gone, they are gone. We probably won't do this design again because it's the first ever could be anything. But be a part of history. The first... And also the quality is so good, these should last you forever. Seriously, they're that good of a quality. But Guru, walk us through it, mate. Yeah, mate, these are unreal. Also, shout out to all my fellow front row forwards out there. You will not find a t-shirt that fits you better. And it's going up to 6XL. <laughs> unreal. And I'm wearing a large. Matty, uh, Timmy's wearing a medium. 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 I've got a 3XL, fits me, unreal. 3XL. Yeah. So, and they're honestly, as, as I said, they're not just like, oh, we didn't just get a shirt and then copy it with the design. Out. This has been specifically designed for the bloke community by Lockie. Absolute legend. 6 p.m. next Monday. Um, look, I'm a bit frazzled, boys. Mm. I just got in a fight. <laughs> I just got in a fight. I hope I don't get sued. Do you reckon the camera's going to... Do you reckon someone in... The, you know what? What if someone in the audience sues me for the aggression I just showed them? Is that assault? Well, I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? We are going to find <laughs> yeah. out. Look, so, hey, you actually, you know what? You need to buy the CBA shirts because if you don't, yeah, you could be going out, of, going out of business. Also, obviously, you can see the hats, guys. Could be anything else. Limited supply. Be there or be square. Guru, how, how aroused are you right now at this time of year? 
Yeah, a bit of uh, dream come true stuff today for me. Uh, obviously, trials the other day were unreal. Heap of CBAs getting about. We even got a feature in the uh, commentary of the Broncos game. Yes. CBAs yes. got a shout out. So that was exciting to see. And uh, yeah, it's all heating up, mate. I'll tell you what, Timmy, how'd you go on the weekend, mate? Pretty good, mate. I actually took things pretty steady. Uh, nice cruisy one. We uh, said trials were trials were upon us, so had to shape up and be focused. Good weekend, mate. mate. Really good weekend. Really good weekend. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Aussie Under Nineteens winning the World Cup. Yes. Uh, and a big sucked into Matty, uh, who's Indian cricket's <laughs> biggest fan. So sucked into Matty. And I'll just took a photo of Matty's face. Yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah, get that moment in the bag. Uh, and just to paraphrase. Future West Tigers Premiership winner Jerome Luai. Uh, India are our sons when it comes to <laughs> World Cup cricket. So, big weekend. And also, a lot of those under 19s probably have to work tomorrow. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. Double whammy. Hit him with the double hard whammy. Hard times. Hard times. <laughs> but a, a good result. So, a great weekend. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for Face the Music. Bit different because as we sit here, as we live and breathe, the Super Bowl is currently happening. Uh, and we did our picks last week, so we'll go over them next week. But Face the Music, brought to you by Sportsbet. This week, we're going to talk about the goat of all goats, Australia's, is he the greatest ever Australian mixed martial artist? I'd say yes. Mm. I'd say yes. For me anyway, Alex Volkanovsky, huge fight. Almost, I mean, he doesn't need to cement anything in his legacy, mm. but it, it almost a bit of, is, is a bit of a legacy fight because if he loses this fight after losing to Islam... The, the haters will just come out of the woodwork like, oh, yeah, you know, he's done this, that, the next thing. Whereas if he goes back and beats, uh, is it Tapore? Uh, yeah, Tapore. If he goes back and beats him, I think that just like cements him as the goat of his division and one of the goats all time. Yep. Speak to me, Hammy. So you've got him as the top Aussie MMA I think fighter? so. I think so. Well, you've got, you got John Wayne Parr. Yep. Muay Thai, what he did. Yep. He's got to be one in the, on the Mount Rushmore. Yep. You've got, um, obviously, Volks. Yep. And I'm sure there's like an MMA community, there's like old school guys that like came ages ago. But yep. outside of that, like Robert Whittaker for a little bit. Yeah. But probably didn't have the run close or didn't come close to the run that Volks has had, even though he's one of our best. Yep. Anyone else? I've got Wayne Parr, Volk, Kemp, just based on what we saw before there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you throw a blanket over him. Throw a blanket over him. I channeled mine on Mike Tyson. You did. You did. Uh, get him on the undercard. Get him on there. Let's go. Uh, but yes, this one's happening on Sunday, 4 p.m. So it's going to be at the end of the trials. Sit there all day, watch your trials. Keep watching TV, and you're going to see Volk versus uh, Tapura over there in Vegas. Uh, Volk dollar eighty six, uh, so he's the favourite, and Tapura dollar ninety eight. So it's close. It is close. It is. Cl Would it be fair to say everyone's going to go Volk in head to head, or is anyone? 100%. Yeah, yep. everyone's going with Volk. But it is a. It's a people that are just riding off Tapura are just. It's, yep. cra it's craziness to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought as we're all going to go Volk, maybe I'll, I'll just get your method of victory and also your round of victory. Okay. Um, so take it away. You've got the new ball there. Okay. I've got um, Volk's points. Points? Yep. yep. Going the distance? Points. Yep. I've got KO round three. Yep. Volk, KO, round four. Yep. I'll go, I'll go round five. Well, yeah, I'm going to go KO as well. I'm going to go round three. I'm with Guru. Round so, three. Uh, Very dangerous first two rounds because Tapore can throw them. Yep. At time of recording, uh, 19 bucks for round three for Volk. So oh, nice. we'll see how we go. Okay. But anyway, we'll have a look at that one next week. We'll also pick up the Super Bowl tips as well and all the Taylor Swift Super Bowl hub stuff that we did the other week yep. as well. Yep. Over seven and a half, surely, you'd think. I mean, it's almost like they'll do it just to troll everyone just yeah. to do it. You know what I mean? Because there's been such an uproar about it. Yeah. It's almost like the camera's going to like, well, I'm just going to troll you now. Yep. If you didn't make an uproar, I would have just done it once. Yeah. There you go. Well, guys, we'll find out next week, won't we? So we will. Well, we'll find out this week, but we'll find out on this show next week. <laughs> we'll unpack it next week. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There yeah. we go. There we go. Um, but yeah, thoughts on the Volks fight, boys? Do you agree with the sentiment that it's not as uh, what's the word? Is it fait accompli? Is that the word? It's not. It's not genocide. Quite. That's for sure. No, it's, no. <laughs> definitely not. Um, but it's not a sure thing that no. Vox is just going to walk through this guy. This guy has got some heavy hands, and he's a really good wrestler. He does, and he's been talking some smack Ooh. about our boy Volk as well. He said he's too old. He's just ticked over thirty-five years old, and there is the thirty-five-year-old curse mm. in MMA. So we actually did a little video with Volk at Sportsbet. I don't know if you've seen it uh, doing the rounds at the moment, but if you haven't. Head to the Sportsbet YouTube or the Sportsbet Instagram. Uh, basically, it's Volk dressed up as an old guy, doing old guy stuff. Uh, just, you know, calling this guy's bluff a little bit, you know. And, uh, you know, don't give too much away, but I'd be keeping your eye on some of the press conferences in the lead-up to the fight, yeah. whether maybe 
this uh, gets reprised in some Ooh, way. Ooh, is that a sneak peek? Is that inside info? Didn't hear it from me. Didn't hear it from <laughs> me. But uh, he might be heading over there to do some stuff with that. So, um, yeah, I think you're right. It's not a fait accompli, but it certainly would cement him. Would cement him as the GOAT. Yeah, like if he goes down there and, you know, finishes him in the first three rounds, yep. you just – you almost say to Volks, right off into the sunset, baby. Oh, yeah. Just get on right off into the sunset. Go back to making your tomato – that you made uh, yep. on the sports bet ad. Correct. Check that out on YouTube. One of the great ads ever. Yeah. And Volk, almost, I mean, they're talking awards. Well, that's, maybe he'll call time on the fighting career early to just go and focus on the acting. Mate. Just go and focus <laughs> on the acting. He, he really does punch above his weight in front of the camera as well. Really good. He, he's been great every time we've used him. So, um, yeah. It was a content KO, as they say. It was. Well, it he was. Pe <laughs> he, pe he picked up that last fight, was it? 10 days or something ridiculous before it went up a weight division yep. got dusted said he took it because he wasn't in a good place mm. so if he comes out wins this one surely it's back to back to being the best yeah if uh, he ever well lost he, it. i mean yeah he never lost it in his division but it's just when you get, have the vision of him being knocked out it just changes the kind of yeah. mythos around a fighter um and yeah he dared to be great he fell short uh but there's a lot of talk about this young guy. Is is it's all about the age? Like he's young, he's hungry, he's explosive, and actually, there's a lot of stats on when um, fighters hit 35, they usually struggle to win. I think it's win back their belt or yes. something along those lines. Correct. Um, but I'm back in Volksin all the way. He's built different. Has he played country rugby league though? This bloke. Exactly. He hasn't, uh, exactly. and I don't think he'd. You know, put it this way, he wasn't playing front row as a five foot six bloke like Volks was. Yeah. Um, but, in, you know, it is a dangerous, dangerous fight because this guy has heavy hands, heavy, great boxing. He has, like, really good boxing. But the, the benefit that Volks has is Volks is way more well-rounded, way more well-rounded. Like, you know, you would, you would say to Poro kind of is a boxer, really good wrestler, really good boxer, and, like, that's kind of what he has. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he has other stuff, but at the elite level, whereas the beauty, the beauty about Volks is he's elite essentially, essentially everywhere in his game. Um, but those first two rounds with a fresh Tapora is like scary, scary. So I, I think the, the fight will go, you'll see a quite measured Volks for the first uh, two to three rounds where he's just touching him, touching him, probably doing a lot of um, kicking, I'd say, just to loosen, uh, just to jam up Tapora's front leg, especially usually boxers are quite heavy on their leg, their front leg. Um, and if he does that, then, then Tapora will lose his power and his footwork, which is, is quite good. But it's easier said than done. But I think you'll see a lot of touching, a lot of point fighting, um, a lot of softening up with Volks, a lot of uh, setting up traps for later in the fight. And then you might see those traps executed in round four and five. How good has the last 12 months of sport been? Oh, my God. Just getting There's better. There's three runner. or four things to watch every single week. It's, it's unreal. It's so yeah. good. It's so good. I'll tell you what, and speaking of how good sport is, what about the trials, the turnout for the trials? Oh, yeah. Mm. Rugby league has never mm. been better. Uh, Wynnum was a sellout, um, pretty what? sure. Yeah, they're on the roof of the jumping castle there at yeah. Wynnum, by the looks of the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, they, they actually were. They literally were on the roof. <laughs> yeah. um, then you've got uh, the Capras versus Dolphins. I'm pretty sure that was a sellout. Yep. And then from the videos I saw, it was a pretty decent crowd, South versus Manly. Yep. Um, so rugby league in a great spot. But that's Face the Music, brought to you by Sportsbet. Shot a little sneaky ad with them uh, the other last Thursday. It was a, it's a bunch of fun. And as always, a massive thank you to Sportsbet for uh, supporting the platform. Support them because they support us guys. Uh, and make sure to gamble responsibly. You win some, but you lose more. Looking forward to your performance there, Campy. We're in the business of making dreams come true. That's what I'm here for. And uh, you mentioned a few weeks ago you'd love to be an extra on a set. Yep. So this is just a little... Stepping stone. This is like a bit of a pre-season trial for you to get on one of those kind of Hollywood I'm, sets later in the year. I'm manifesting. Yeah. I'm manifesting. And I'll look, be in a Hollywood movie sooner rather than later. Well, and, you know, when you see this ad come out in a couple of weeks, just look at the range on this bloke. He's in a, he's in a <laughs> bellboy costume, which I think a few people saw a bit of a sneak peek of. Sneak peek. You know, he's, he's in a few other settings. I'm not going to give play him a boxer? He's just played a boxer. I mean, maybe this bloke could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Speaking of could be anything... Uh, with this awesome kit we've got on. It's time now to look at the trials. And basically what we'll be doing, guys, this, uh, this episode is we'll be um, screening our notes. We'll be screening our notes and going through all of the young fellas. Hey, boys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be screening our notes. Um, basically, each team, we won't spend too long in each team because obviously we'll be here for seven hours and who would do that? Um, <laughs> And we'll just be looking at, we'll go through the trials and the results, obviously, but then we'll go into, okay, who's some young guys that look like they could be something in the future. And then at the end of that segment, what we're gonna do is, is we are gonna pick our class of 24 CBAs. 
So we can only pick, it was supposed to be five. It was supposed to be five CBAs that make the class of 24, but we got two aroused and it's going to be seven. Uh, and so, but next year we're going to hope to make it five. So each year what we're going to do is pick our class of 24, our class of 25, and then at the end of the year, we're going to look at who did well, who didn't do well in their, you know, was this class the best? You know, in a few years time, just like in, you know, the, the draft in Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl in NFL, um, you look back and you say, oh man, the class of 2003 was unbelievable or the class of 24 or whatever. Um, and so at the end of this segment, which will go for quite a while, I will be selecting three, three picks. Guru will be se selecting three picks. That, that could be anything. And then Timmy, Maddie, and Hamiso will be a wild card, the last pick of the class of 24 CBAs. And that, this is going to happen every single year the week after the first trial. Every single year, the week after the first trial. Anything else to add? Super exciting. Very exciting stuff. This is gonna Very be exciting. It's gonna be a draft system too, so. It's a draft system. Fun. Yeah. It's gonna be a bit of fun. So, but don't, also for listeners, we're not just gonna talk about the CBAs this today. We're also gonna do the typical Monday review show as well. Um, now, let's get straight into it, shall we? Oh, brought to you by Bloke Beer. Grab a case of Bloke Beer, the beer of rugby league. It's back. Footy this weekend. Footy this weekend. Mm. Watch all games on KO. Uh, anyway. Hey, on. Let's just. <laughs> let's just rewind there for a minute. Did you say shout out to KO? I, I did. I got an announcement. Mm. That's interesting. Guys, um, <laughs> first of all, I want to say this is not about money. This is just about playing the position I want to play. Um, it's about an opportunity. I've got a young family. Um, uh, you know. And it's all about it's all about lifestyle sometimes. Mm. And so I, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are oh you know he's changing sides or whatever. But this is purely out of lifestyle, family, and positional change. That's it. <laughs> so that so the announcement is, bloke is now officially with Ko. That is right. <laughs> bloke is officially with Ko. Watch all games on Ko. Um, just offered me such a good the family lifestyle. They're really a, they're a family club. They're a family club. Are we, are we being punked at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> Played the family first card. Can you believe it, Hammy? Look, I, I, it's a family first. Yeah. I'm a family first kind of guy. Might as well call him Peter Griffin, family guy. <laughs> 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 so, look, uh, very excited to be with KO, guys. Uh, all jokes aside, yes, we are with KO now. Um, I'm really, really, we've got some, already some really good things planned. I can't say exactly, but let's put it this way. Uh, in Queensland, there might be a live show with a big name. That's all I'll say. Oh. And it's with KO. So we'll just leave it there. Um, just quick, in a, in a previous life, you, you would um, uh, kind of just outline some of the differences between various streaming services. What are, what are some of the pros of KO? Well, pros, every game, mate. Yep. Every game, every game. Also, 4K coming this year, baby. 4K coming this year. You can watch every game at any time. Um, and also, on KO, all the content you get. 24 hour league channel, baby. There you go, there you go. Yep. I'm so, a KO man. That's, yep. So KO going to play you at fullback, I hear, not centre? Look, I can't confirm or deny. Um, there's I, think, been... I think KO looks better at 5'8", actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, Ooh, we'll KO see. KO week. We'll see. Done, yeah, don't worry. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I got hey, it. I'm, <laughs> I'm falling on deaf ears here, boys. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You'll get that one on the way home. <laughs> I, know I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not funny, but give me something so at least I know you understood it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, we're with KO now, guys. So you can watch all these trials on KO going forward this week with the first game on Thursday. Stop it. Stop it. Now, get all the banter out, boys. Yep. Because there's a 24-hour there's a embargo. So once that ends, no more banter. I didn't agree to this embargo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use our 24 hours. All right, sweet. So if we think of other stuff later, we can just bring it back to... Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, sweet. Uh, well, congrats, though. Happy for you. Yeah, very happy. <laughs> Broncos defeat winner Manly, 26 to 16. Uh, so it was pretty much... You would have Z probably Xavier. Willison would be the only one that's probably going to start in the Broncos 17. You've got a few guys... Oh, not even a few. Maybe Tristan's the only other guy I can think of that's played NRL. Dean Mariner. Dean Mariner, sorry, yep. <clears throat> but mostly it was the younger fellows that haven't played NRL uh, yet or, uh, you know, on the fringes of playing NRL. Um, and, and to be honest, Wynnum had them against the ropes until the last 20 minutes. 
Uh, now, look, time for Power Play of the Week. We have a new segment today kicking off the Power Play of the Week thanks to LDV. The LDV T60 is one of the most powerful utes in its class, possessing 160 kilowatts of grunt. Our Power Play this week goes to Tristan Saylor. That is right. I mean, pick your poison. Tristan Saylor, crossfield kick, Tristan Saylor. Uh, line break for a try, um, coming on and just absolutely dominating the cutout pass. But our power play was Tristan Saylor. My, in my opinion, was his banana kick across the field. That was his power play. Uh, the LDV T60 has 160 kilowatts of grunt, which makes it one of the most powerful utes in its class. The LDV is a sharply priced option from 36,990. Drive away for ABN holders during the LDV 2023 plate clearance making it ideal for those considering buying a new ute or even those considering buying a second-hand competitor. At that price, why go second-hand when you can have a brand new LDV, a hard-working ute that is great value for money and has a great engine room. A link to the LDV website and offers will be in the show notes. A massive thank you to LDV for coming on board the bloke community um, because as I always say, guys, these guys are supporting us. These guys are supporting the bloke community and helping us grow. And all these extra shows you see, all these extra content, it wouldn't be possible without the support of our partners. So massive thank you to LDV. And check her out if you're in the uh, looking for a bit of a 160 kilowatt grunt machine. That should be the slogan. Slogan. Anyway. Um, Tristan Saylor. Uh, he had a couple of errors throughout the game, but if he wasn't picked in that squad... I think Winner Manly go on with that one. Mm. He was the difference. Uh, he threw a cutout ball early in that game for a fantastic try assist. And then his individual try later. It's unbelievable he's not in a regular first grade squad. I cannot believe. And look, I, I do believe he needs to sort errors out. Because even when he played first grade for the Broncos, he had a few errors in him. I understand the argument. It's like, well, if you want these big plays to happen, he's going to have to risk things. It's, yep. But it's just about finding that happy medium. You don't want to coach the... Um, What's the word? I guess the the flare out of him. You don't want that to happen because that does happen quite often. But also in NRL, it's just the errors just get crucified in NRL. And so let's just remove the errors from his game and just look at what he did on the field. How he doesn't have, honestly, nearly, what do you reckon, 12 NRL clubs? Mm. Oh, we'll go 10. 10 NRL clubs that aren't diving at his services, I don't know. And Campy, that, do you talk about, you know, not taking the pizzazz out of their game, and it's a fine line between errors and you know coming out with big plays. We had the exact same conversation six to eight months ago about Reese Walsh, the other fullback for that club. Not saying Tristan Taylor's obviously on Reese Walsh's level, but they're similar in terms of flair, speed, good passing games, mm. and you know Reese Walsh more often than not comes up with the big play. And there's a couple of errors, but it's the same with Tristan Taylor. You, mm. you can't shut him down, can you? Well, and that's what's just shocking to me because like. You know, I, I hate to dig the boot in, but, like, why aren't the Raiders, Raiders chasing him? Why yeah. aren't – I mean, even the Doggies chasing him. Like, There are so many clubs that could use a guy like Tristan Saylor. It is just bizarre to me that – so that he, he asked for an early release to go to Lee in the Super League. Yep. I still think he has got that contract, I think, uh, for 25. There's no way this guy should be in the Super League at this age. He should be playing in a role. Guru, thoughts? Yeah, when I have a look at him, as you said, you said there's a few clubs that should be looking at him. Like, I reckon there's only a handful of clubs that – genuinely don't need him mm. like whether it be fullback 5-8 you could chuck him in the centers you could chuck him at 14 like there's not many clubs in this competition that i don't think wouldn't be better off having him in there 17 mm. and brisbane's probably one of them mm. and it's one of the and it's the club he's at yeah it's I, I i find it bizarre that there aren't clubs throwing money at him and yeah what he's got as well you can't coach it you've either you got really it or can't. you don't yeah oh, and most absolutely. guys don't he's one of the few that does yeah it, it, like you could even make the argument that Penrith could have gone him instead of Laurie. You know, that that's a potential out. And obviously they know Laurie, they've seen him come through, but like that's how good of a player he is. There's not many clubs that wouldn't be a better top twenty five or top thirty with him. Yeah. With you know, with him in it. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> and and even for him, like I can't believe he's and I I know he's obviously um spoken to Lee and all yeah. that, which Blew me away. I can't believe he's having to talk to Super League sides. Well, like, and Lee as well. It's not like they're a dominant club. You'd mm. expect him to be landing at, like, Sel mm. St. Helens. I think Leeds are dominant now. Like, I know they've got their players, and I'm sure there's Super League fans are going to be like, oh, we've got this guy's guy. I'm just, I'm just saying, you'd expect him to be talking to one of the more dominant clubs, unless Lee are killing it now. I, I don't know. Uh, I, th I think they've had a much better year this year. But, yeah, I would have expected 
I wouldn't have expected the Super League, mm. but if I was, it would have been your St. Helens, your Wiggins, these sort of sides. Very, very surprising. Um, he was absolutely electric. And just some of the some of the plays he came up with, they weren't just, uh, you know, dive over the line or an easy short ball. Like These were big, yeah. big plays. The only thing with Lee, you think about now, obviously Adrian Lamb's the head coach. He played Origin with Wendell. Maybe okay. there's a connection there. Yeah, yeah. That's all I can think of, though. Maybe they're, they're looking at it go, he's get, probably going to get a decent wicket, goes over there, plays two or three years. He's probably only going to be 25 or so, 26, comes back and plays NRL maybe. Because we've seen that path used yeah. regularly now. Well, not regularly, but more than we used to. I, it's I a sure. path. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They won the, won the Challenge Cup this year. Okay. Opening, but, you know, historically haven't been as big a club, mm. but resurgence, like obviously off the back of that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, T Tristan Saylor was absolutely outstanding, and it just shows you that when you see a player that's just that little bit of above Queensland Cup come on, they can just change the game, and it, it just shows you the level difference between first grade um, and reserve grade. Ironically, he's not even in the first grade squad, which shows you how frigging good Reese Walsh is. There's, there's a few players that we'll get to across the what three or whatever it was trials for the weekend. That were genuine NRL quality who mm. carved up, wasn't like you yeah. see that jump so quickly. Yeah, and it, they just—it's almost the game's almost happening in slow motion for him. Um, How about his? Uh, just speaking of stuff you can't coach, his banana kick over into the corner, unbelievable. Crazy. Not a fluke either. He's no. done that on a number of occasions. Yeah, and also like you, you can tell it's not a fluke because of the way he holds the ball, like he intentionally kicked it like that, and it needed to be kicked like that because if he kicked it the normal way it would have given the winger time to set himself and catch the ball. You kick it flat and like on that angle, it lands in almost no man land where the, the winger can't get to it. Um, now look, he could have maybe done a Cooper Cronk style, just like punch it real low and hard. But if you're gonna, if you can do it like that, you do it like that. Like that was crazy from Tristan Saylor. And it's so hard to defend as well because you can't practice for it because not many blokes can do it. Nah, no one's no one's sitting there going, all right, I'm about to do 50 of these banana kicks for you to catch. Like you're already spending an extra hour out in the field catching normal bloody kicks, yeah. let alone banana kicks. Um, so and, and it's even just like the flight of the ball is hard for a winger to gauge. Like it, it'll, it actually like dips away from you. It's, it's going like this, so it's like harder to kind of grab into your, your chest. Like all of these little things with kicking the ball like that, it just makes it, it's, it's harder for the attacker as well to catch, but it's also just as hard for the winger to catch. But it also like the way that he hits him, and I've seen him do it a few times, like it, it almost swings into the attackers. Yeah. Chest. It's like it's almost like the grubber that Cleary does, where he like yeah. grubbers it off the edge of his boot and he, it wraps back around across the dead ball line and doesn't go over. It's similar to that, but it does that in the air and like wraps back in almost into the centers or wingers' hands. Off the boot, you go on, going dead, going dead. Then you're like, oh my god, look yeah. at this thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Tristan Saylor was, um, he was electric. The other little thing with him as well, uh, I don't know if there were two or three tries up, winning Manly um, mm. at, at the start, but then as soon as Saylor came on. That just really got him back into the game, and he had a hand in basically everything. That yeah, he just straightened in. everything up. Yeah, he just straightened everything up. He was, um, yeah, he was outstanding. I'm again, I am gobsmacked that a guy like him doesn't have an NRL contract. Um, another guy that came on, uh, who, look, I don't want to get too aroused. I don't want to get too excited. <laughs> Kobe Black. He's still so young, so I, you know, he's got so much work to do. All of the stuff, all of the caveats that you say with a rookie, but geez, we might have one there. He was his timing, his ability, his, his try involvements. I think he was the pass before Sailor in nearly all the tries. So the kick he put up that they scored off, that was Kobe. The first cutout ball, that was Kobe to Sailor. Um, then the individual try that Sailor scored where he made that break, that was Kobe to. And so. Although Tristan definitely straightened their attack up, the real person that fully straightened their attack up and was making the right decisions, there was even a, he went down a short side, hit the edge back rower, the edge back rower, instead of just handsing it, came back in, they ended up dropping the ball. But if he had to just hands it, it would have been a try. Kobe Black is, I don't want to get too excited because he's so young and you don't want to put too much pressure on the kid, but you just have to say the obvious. I'm assuming the Broncos are looking at him going, okay, we're going to sign Reno for an extra year, which will be 2025, will probably be his last year. 2026, that will make – Kobe is 18 right now. That will make him probably 20. I'm assuming that is the hope if Jock Madden isn't the guy to fill Reno's shoes straight away. First time I've ever seen him, I was blown away. Yeah. He was very impressive. And I agree with you. Like sometimes when you watch kids like that at that age, you go, oh, a little bit raw. 
He didn't look that raw to me. Oh, the, the only thing, and this this isn't even this is not unique to him. This is any half coming in the game was just in defence that try they scored where they hit that that short line. He'll just learn as he gets older to just put his body in front and just take that because like in when you're a younger half, you always kind of like want to make the big play of checking that guy sliding off, giving your edge back rowers, oh, sorry, edge centre and and winger. Um, that extra man so they don't have to jam in. Whereas as he gets older, he's going to go, you know what, this decision just has to be made and I've just got to trust my centre to come in. That was the only like blemish. Outside of that, he was, and again, every half coming in, like you're going to get spotted up by the big boys. So that it's not even, it's, it's just halves in general when they're younger. I loved as well when you're watching him, quite often you see young halves coming to trials and stuff like that with new guys around them and whatnot. Like there can be a bit of disorganisation around them. Never was with him. Never. You can tell he's organised. He talks. Yep. Guys around him know where they need to be, which sounds like such a simple thing, but how many first-grade halves do you see well, still watch, struggling with that? Watch the first 20 minutes. Broncos looked, <sighs> like, so clunky. Yep. So clunky. Like, they're missing the – like, Moses getting is getting out of hooker and no one's, you know, with him, and it was just all over the shop. He come on and just – it completely <laughs> changed their attack. Completely changed their attack. And, yeah, just – like, even just go and watch his little things, like his ability to square defence up. We speak about it almost every week on the podcast, but that it's not a natural ability, but for him to have it that good so young, like it's almost half the battle. Seriously, it's almost half the battle in, in attack for a half is squaring the defence up. The most exciting thing for me too about watching him the other day was that he didn't come on when they were on the front foot. Mm. They weren't winning by 40. They were behind. Yep. They were on the back foot and he did what he did. It was very impressive. And like even the little uh, try, the actual try assist he had where gets tackled, looks like he's going to ground, has enough body strength, you know, in his core to stay on his feet. Then he puts a grubber through and they score. Like that's, that's like the magic stuff that you can't really teach a feel for the game. What do you think of the, the? Yeah. And they're like, what, there's, he's 17. And I think he's 18. 18, 18 now. Yeah. And there's a few in the game, those young halves around about that 18, 19 year old age bracket that they've got big, big futures ahead and he's right amongst the elite of them from what we've seen. And as you said, Kemp, you don't want to heap too much pressure on young blokes like this, but he just looks like he's potentially the full mm. package. In, when I say full package, he ticks every box for a young half. As you mentioned, Guru, he looks like he's a talker. Defensively, stepping up against the big boys, he looks solid enough. Good kicking game. He, he looks wonderful. Marsden yeah. High, so that Cam Smith, Izzy Flower schooling, yep. came to the same area. He, he looks something special, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, and so just for him, you know, there's going to be attention on him now. There's going to be attention. All Broncos fans, anytime Renault goes mm. down and then someone comes in and doesn't play as well, they're going to be like, oh, Kobe this, Kobe that. He's that. And the Broncos, are, look, if there's one coach, it's Kevy Walters. He's going to know how to handle this. But it's just about not getting ahead of himself. Not that I've seen any evidence of that. You know, he's relatively young. But when you're younger and you start getting all this attention... And give you think, him... Sorry, mate. No, no, you go. Just say, give him a handful of games in Q Cup this year. Again, get him prepared against the big boys. And then I said, they just... Lock him in as quick as they can, and they don't need to rush this kid at all. With, yeah. with Jock Madden there as well, mm. like he'll come in, he'll still step in and be next in line yep. for Adam Reynolds, but they just they don't need to blood this kid too early. Yeah. Don't need to rush him. Probably shouldn't even get close to debuting this year unless he just absolutely brains it in Queensland Cup. But it's just about, I guess, you know, the harsh way they used to say it to us young guys when I was coming through, you know, Hodjo on that, was just like, you've done nothing. But like really, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, you've done absolutely nothing. And... You know, they probably wouldn't say that these days, but it's the truth. It's yep. the truth. Like, you've had a good trial game, and it's super exciting, but if you want to fulfil your potential, you've got to re always remember, like, I'm not even close to where I should be yet. Um, so I'm super excited with him, and I hope he um, looks like a good young kid too, like just, just the, the way the boys got around him and that, and even some of the fans are already kind of, you know, excited about him. Um, he feels like a guy we're going to be talking about on this show for... The next two or three years. Yeah, I think so. Mm. And I'm just excited to watch his development. I, yeah. I think you'll probably you probably won't see him debut till maybe twenty five. I think twenty five, midway through the year, or if Renner gets injured, gets a couple of games, and then they probably hope in twenty six, you know, he, he takes over. Um yeah, so the game is a whole with the Broncos. It's just a trial, so it's very you know, and you, and a lot of people go, Well, that's the Broncos younger boys, they should be more connected. But uh, with the Broncos, a lot of their younger boys go all back to different clubs. So it's not like they're a reserve grade side that plays week in, week out, like with each other. If, if I had to be super nitpicky, is like 
the one thing that I was a bit worried about with the, this trial side, and it's a trial, so it doesn't really mean that much, but it's just the mentality of like, I would just score three or four tries at the end of the game. And I, I, I don't know whether it was a coincidence that happened, but it's like, geez, doesn't that reflect the NRL side where they just go, it's all good. We might be down with 20 to go. We'll just score, we'll just score three tries and win the game. There was a bunch of errors, a bunch of you know penalties or whatever. Um, so I, I just hope that, like, you can do that with our first great side because it is such a gun side where you just go, look, just give Reese the ball, give Payne the ball, Paddy the ball, Katoni, Selwyn, we can sort it. But in the lower grades, you can't do that because you don't have that same level of um, quality. So that's the only bit I was like, I hope heading into this year, we still want to keep the attacking flair, attack from anywhere, risk it, risk it, everything like that. But if we can just make sure we just like meet in the middle somewhere. And I mean, you look at um, Penrith Panthers first year, there was a stat, basically they never lost the first 20 minutes. That was like the stat through the whole year. And it was a, like really focused on their attack. And Ivan Cleary had to, after they lost that final to the Storm, had to come out and he said, well, you know what, I'm going to actually focus more on defence. And that's what we actually saw. People think that Penrith have been the same side since that 2020 um, loss, but they actually haven't. They changed quite a lot in 2021. And so I'm not saying that Broncos need to do that big of a change, but just that little bit pull back and, and reduce the errors slightly. Um, yeah, that, that's a, if I had to be super nitpicky, look, it's a trial. It doesn't matter that much, but that's a nitpicky. I was about to say, you know, that's the sort of attitude you don't see from the Panthers, which would have been ironic after that grand final, scoring three or four in the last 20 <laughs> to take it home. Uh, but, yeah, I, I feel like that is something that you wouldn't see at the Panthers. It's hard with the Broncos. Like, you've got, you've got such a young squad with so many guys that are such high energy. Like, you almost – you want them to shift that attitude, but you don't want them to use that, sure. that flamboyant – What's their DNA? Broncos DNA. Yeah, that's yeah. their DNA. Like, Broncos have always been known as a side. Like, when they're at their best – that will attack from anywhere and entertaining footy. Very rarely do you go, oh, Broncos is a, at least when they're the best, Broncos are a boring side. So, like, I'm not saying they should go 50 50 and try to, you know, meet in the middle. I'm saying, like, could we go 80 20, you know, 20 conservative, 80%. Um, and look, it might just be a coincidence, but that's something that I was looking at going, I hope that's um, something that we can just approve slightly. Yeah, especially with, you know, a lot of guys leaving that first grade squad this year, Kate Wall. Herbie, mm. Flegler, like you're losing a lot of key experienced guys there. So defence is going to be really interesting for Brisbane this year. Um, I'll just get it up. What, what are your thoughts on the trial, mate? Well, I, I reckon they were, they were great. And you, just those, those guys that you mentioned that, that come on just um, when it was there to be, I don't know, when they look like they had nothing. Yeah, Sailor and Black, they, they look really good, got it going. There's a couple of others here that probably stood out to me as well. Um, Karapani, the centre. Yep. Thought he was... Good. Root, you got a bit more on him. Yeah, he's come from South Sydney. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the story is there. I know South were very high on him a couple of years ago. Uh, he's ended up at the Brisbane Broncos, and uh, mate, your outside back depth is yeah. off its head. He's his head. like he's probably fourth or fifth guy down. Mate, he'd be and that he's far. Wildly talented. Yeah, I mean, you got Ethan Quaywood as well on the other side. Yeah. Um, Did you make anything of obviously being a second string side sent out by the Broncos and Dean Mariner getting a start? We sort of spoke about it last week, but we were sort of suspecting probably Jesse Arthurs and maybe Corey Oates had the, the front running to be the other winger. Does Mariner getting named in that game on the weekend say anything to you? I, I think, yeah, it probably looks like Oates and Arthurs probably have the, the jump. Um, but. Dean Mariner still showed his class. Like, if you watched him closely, you know, he made some line breaks. He should have passed inside and instead of – but the fact that he's still impacting the game like that shows you that he is a step above this level. Yeah. He's still only, like, I think 20 years old as well. Um, was interesting, though, that they actually switched him to centre for a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. So I think that – because I think he plays centre in Queensland Cup, and so I think they're still probably looking at him going, okay, if we have one injury or, or Selwyn doesn't work – we can bring Dean in or we can put him on um, on the wing. Uh, look, I'd be surprised if he doesn't fight his way into the side by, by mid-year. I, I, I think he is, yeah, look, as long as he doesn't have that second-year syndrome or whatever where he kind of drops off a little bit and doesn't have the same kind of high fire as he does his first year, he's just electric. Like, he's just electric. I know we spoke about it a bit last week, but like if I was Parramatta watching that trial and oh, all those outside backs, back. you pick up the phone, Someone. don't you? <laughs> Mate, look at, look at the, the You don't even say who you want, so I just want one of them. Yeah, oh, yeah just send us one of your outside backs yeah. on your top third. I don't care which one. Just give us one. Bizarre. Then you go look at the Dolphins trial. Like, how does a, a team in his second 
year have that much depth in anyway. Yeah. Sorry, Para fans, I know that it stings you. Um, now, uh, another guy that I thought um, I really, really liked watching is Avi Willison. Mm. I just love his attitude. He's in everything, you know. He's he's for a big man, very easy for him to fall back on the fact that he's a big, rangy front rower. Uh, I am so if he can say injury free, he might be a breakout star this year. He really, really might. It's, as long as he can say injury free, he might be a breakout star. Just the, the thing that I loved about him is that he played first grade last year, quite a, like quite a few games. Goes back to Q Cup trial, the first trial, and so a lot of young fellas with egos a lot of young fellows with egos oh, i'm better than this and you know they kind of plot along they get through their work they they kind of get off the field yeah whatever his energy yesterday was not a man that felt he was better than anything it was a guy that felt like he was a leader and felt like he needed to lead that pack um now in saying all that i thought the winning board pack was outstanding and yep. really stood toe to toe with them uh but xavier for me wilson is like I am super excited because like imagine him coming off the bench with tw- just for 20 minutes each game for the Bronx high energy big footwork and, and that's what it would be to be a 20 minute stint to be perfect for a body shape like him perfect and also perfect for where he's at in his career right now you don't want him going out there playing 40 50 minutes just 20 minutes what do you think of uh, Xavier Timmy yeah well he's we mentioned being a reserve grade trial largely he's one that I think could be their round one got his yeah. Got a taste last year, averaged 20 minutes for them. For the Broncos, that is, seven games. He looks an absolute go. And obviously, losing Flegler, uh, Paliasia, he has a big role to play for them this year. Mm. And he will. In any, you know, first tick of 2024, couldn't look any better. Yep. Uh, one area where I was a bit, um, not, didn't really stand out to me, and, and edge back row was really hard, because sometimes you can just get through your work and it's hard to stand out. Mm. But I, I did think Broncos edge back row, um, no one really like stood out, stood out to me, and that's a little bit uh, concerning. Not with our starting seventeen, but let's say you know Touchwood, Piacora, and Ricky both get injured, then you have to okay, well, who's there in that top thirty? You'd assume that it's it's a few of those guys. I know Hunt was brought from the Dragons. He he had some good moments, but no one really likes because the thing is the way like footy works is it might look a certainty that Ricky and Piacora um, have those edge spots. But neither one of those players are such veterans that if they play four or five, maybe five poor games, they're not going to get replaced. Like, there's still an opportunity for that spot. Whereas, like, sometimes when you came through with the Broncos where they were all origin players, it's like, there is no way I'm getting that unless someone gets injured. It, you know, so it's, 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 there's, there's not necessarily a spot up for grabs, but it can be if you force the issue. Um, and so that was a bit area where I was like, oh, I hope... Hopefully next week they'll um, you know step up again kind of thing. Yeah, well, um, Ethan O'Neill, who's one of the edges, he's the son of Julian O'Neill, I believe. Um, he had a lot of raps from this preseason up in the Broncos, from what I've heard. Uh, he was a little bit quiet in that game. I think it, uh, Josh Stuckey was the other one. I think he actually looked better when he went and played for Wyndham on the other side of the park. Yeah. I think he scored a try late, so it would have been filthy if it took him in any time. It's hard with edge back rows. I'm not sitting here saying they had shockers at all. I didn't feel that. It's just quiet. It was just yeah. quiet. Because yeah. the next guy I'm going to talk about he stood out to me. It was um, on the Wynnum side, uh, Zach chong Ni. Mm. I mm. liked him. I really liked what he's about. Super aggressive, very explosive. And just it, when he ran the ball, you could there was a, an extra bit of punch to it. I thought it was he was intent good. to his run. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and like, look, did he set the world light? No, but it, it's the fact that I noticed him, you know. Yeah. It, 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 I noticed him enough to go to Instagram, check the team list, and go, who's that bloody number? You know, number yeah. 11, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, who's that player? Like that's that's how impressive, and that's what you want. Like you may look at both players' stats and go, okay, their stats are really the same. But if one guy is just sticking out from his body language and from the impact he has, that's kind of what you want in a trial. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Can no. <laughs> <laughs> be. I was. You got. You had me thinking about the edge back rowers and like going through the team and they <laughs> We we go on so often about the Broncos' forward depth, but. It's all middles, isn't it? Mm. Like, you go through, from their predicted round one starting side, Jensen, Haas, Carrigan, Baker, Hetherington, Willison, middles, 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 mm. and then potentially a question mark over the edge players, like who is next step up there? We saw late last season, I can't remember the exact circumstances, but I don't know if Ricky and maybe Catewell were injured at one point, but Carrigan actually ended up playing on the edge for a couple yeah. of games and looked great. Mm. But, but you, you don't, don't want him on you, the No, edge. you don't want him on the edge, yeah. so it's, it's a good point. And Jaden Hunt is... Definitely a middle, in my opinion. Too, so he doesn't. No. They they weren't poor by any stretch. Like mm. 
it was just didn't stand out. Whereas like when I, I thought, you know, when I saw the line break from Manor or Sailor or Black yeah. or, you know, that's what really caught my eye. Um, Which is just the reality, like the Brisbane Broncos, you have back rowers that wow. Yeah, usually. And, and, and also it's a trial. So sometimes trials that just doesn't go your way, but that's what trials are for is for those moments that you, you kind yeah. of, you stand out. Um, so yeah, the uh, Zach Chong Ni, he really, really stood out for me. I, I wonder if he is, you know, affiliated with the first grade squad or you know has done some training with them. I wonder what his age is. Um, who stood out for you? Oh, um, Decora. So much potential. So much potential. <laughs> Still just a few years away from first grade, though. I think. I think um, his biggest challenge is not going to be anything physical. So like he almost has to like get that out of his head. Like obviously, as long physically. He will play NRL. His mental mentality is his main focus. Like he should be almost, he should almost be his number one priority. Should be making himself as mentally tough as possible. Because if he does that, then it's like the world's your oyster. You can do whatever you want, kind of thing. Um, I think that as he gets a little bit older, he'll be able to deal with the pace of the game a bit. I think he's so big at the moment. If he was to play NRL right now, clubs would just target him and just yep. just send blokes at him. But the potential of Willison and Takora, holy heckers. I, I think he's a really good talking point coming out of this trial. I've seen a lot of negativity on social media about him and everything because oh. he has been hyped up. Like, just keep in mind, like, these guys, you no matter how – and you can talk more about this – no matter how hard you go in a preseason, I imagine there's no way to replicate a game situation. No, no fucking way. And when you're as big as he is, it's probably going to take more than one game. <laughs> It's going to take half a season. Yeah. And what is he, 19 years old? 19. Yeah, let's not put the red Sharpie through him because he didn't God, absolutely no. blow it away in a trial. Yeah, it's and ridiculous. Also, and you're, 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 um, you're letting Payne Haas and Tino like, ruin your image of when front yeah. rowers are supposed to be good. Like It is very rare. Like, I think Shane Webke didn't debut till tw he was 21 turning 22. Like, so like, that's Shane Webke. Yeah. Like, guys, come on. And he's not, nowhere near as big as Takora. Um, you know, and what I really liked about Takora and Willison is just the way they seem to feed off each other. That's a really good sign because sometimes forwards, front rowers, they almost let themselves be uh, isolated and they don't work in a pack and in a pair. Um, and I thought, um, yeah, uh, Takora is still a couple of years away from first grade, uh, but the potential is all there. It's all just about if he can make himself razor sharp mentally, whew, it'd be hard to stop. I think as well, you just got to give credit to the other mob like he wasn't running out there against deck chairs they, no. they were good footballers though Smith. 100 <laughs> and, and also they played bloody well with them like yep. bloody well uh, massively above their weight because they, their forward pack wasn't as big as the broncos forward pack and they they took it to them yep. they took it to them and so like the thing that's crazy is like, because they see people with a broncos jersey on they associate that with okay well he should be actually at this standard in reality what you saw is a 19 year old playing q cup against men like, that's what you saw. Mm. Uh, any thoughts on Takora, Timmy? Boys, you've summed it up well. Give lastly, time. Give lastly time. with the Broncos, um, I've seen a little bit of a negative chat around Moser. Guys, <laughs> Moser isn't Harry Grant. Matter of fact, how many Harry Grants are there? Like, you, you, to expect the style of Harry Grant to come... It's almost similar to the Payne Haas Tino situation where... We've gotten so used to a guy like Harry Grant that comes into first grade and just tears apart with his running game. Do you think when Cameron Smith was coming through, he was playing like Harry Grant? No. The Broncos literally missed him. Matter of fact, he nearly went to the Raiders, I think it was the Raiders, um, when he was at the Storm because there was a guy ahead of him and then that guy ended up leaving. I'm pretty sure it was the Raiders. Like, Moza, he, although, like, I'm not saying he is the same as Cam Smith, but his style of play is the same as Cam Smith. He's not you know, hyper fast like Cookie or Grant or whatever. He's crafty. He gets through his work. His service is fucking top notch. Um, so just, I personally thought he played well. And I thought that it was actually, I even messaged you, I said, mm. the problem with Moser was he was two steps ahead of his halves partners at the time and his forwards that weren't used to playing with Moser because there was multiple times that he got out of dummy half at the right occasion. If he had have had a big forward just steaming onto it, would have been either a line break, quick play the ball. Um, so with the Moses stuff, like I know he's been hyped up and like, look, yes, we've been hyping him up, but not saying that he should be Harry Grant. We're hyping him up because we see the little details of the way he plays. I thought he was solid. I thought he was solid. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that, not, not that his teammates didn't do him any favours, but there was a number of times where he got out 
and it was the right play and his teammates just weren't aware. They went on the advantage line, yeah. which is, they, those are the tiny details you'll learn as a first grader, forward especially, but even anyone is is learning what kind of dummy half you have and always, always around the ruck, having a forward on the advantage line just in case that happens. Also, always having a fullback that's just close around the ruck coming out of their own that just like can notice and identify. I mean, there's a reason why Smithy and Slater work so well because they played so much rugby league together so they knew. And that's it. We all talk about this time and time and time again, but like at times on the weekend where the timing looked off around Moser, there are new players playing together for the first time. There are mm. players being thrown together and you touched on it, Kempi, especially number nines, dummy halves. There are so many different styles. Like, are they running dummy halves? Are they are there dummy halves who just look to give service off the deck straight away? Are there dummy halves who look both ways, then give it? Like, the timing is going to be off. It's yeah. not going to magically be perfect in the first trial game of the season with a bunch of new faces playing with each other. Yeah, and the timing for a half, uh, sorry, a timing for a hooker, in my opinion, is harder than the timing for a half because the hooker has no control over almost what's around him because he's at a standstill at the start. So he doesn't know. You know whether the like whereas a half can almost adjust his run sometimes to hit the line at the right time. Uh, I thought he was solid. I thought his defence was quite solid as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm still just as excited about Moser. And again, these guys are super young, man. Like they're so young. They've got so long to learn the game. And obviously, it's easy to say, you know, every hooker will be better when they've got a better forward pack in front of them. But I feel like he will excel oh. when he's got a dominant pack. In front and of him. also, when he plays a bit of footy with a spine yep. that know his game and he knows their game, that's when you're going to see the magic around the ruck. And there was a few times there where he did get out and they weren't really with him. Like I was just picturing Ezra and Reese, Reese. pushing oh. with him. Yeah. Show's over. Oh, be unbelievable. Can um, you see him getting a bit of a run in first grade? I think he'll debut season. this year. Yeah. Um, I don't think he'll play. More than five games, I'd be very surprised, yep. unless there's a, a long-term injury and also he kills it. Yep. Um, because they, they genuinely, they if, if Tristan keeps playing the way he is, they, they might opt for a Tristan Sailor at 14 if Smoothie gets injured and bring him on to play a little bit of hooker for 10, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, Could he do it, you reckon? Because there, there was talk on the weekend of like, you know, Pushing to be, was it Kevin Walter saying that? Oh, I'm not sure. Wouldn't mind him potentially pushing for that 14 spot. Yeah. But, you know, Billy Walters hasn't been known to be an 80 minute hooker. I'm not mm. saying he can't do yeah. it, but you sort of need to carry Smoothie there or another hooker. So mm. you can't really have Smoothie and obviously Sailor there. Uh, it'd be interesting. Uh, like, because he's not, he's not too small. Um, and he has played a bit of 5'8, and that's where Billy come from, 5'8. Uh, but I mean, I'm sure the Broncos have seen him at training and, and what he can do yeah. in the middle there. Uh, any thoughts on the Wyndham side? Does he got there was a guy? I can't remember his name. Number eleven. I oh, sorry, number twelve. Gail. Back. Yeah, I thought he had some pretty good, pretty yep. good runs. Yep. Yep. Looked pretty damaging. They just played really well as a side, to be honest. Yeah. Yep. Really tough. Really gritty. Hung in there. Um, it seriously it was just an NRL level player coming on and yep. changing the game that that you know did it. Yep. Funnily enough, a couple of years ago. Guess who was playing, Guru, you probably already remember this, but guess who was playing a couple of years ago in the Wynnum side against the Brisbane Broncos? In this trial. Uh, Bachelor Luke Bateman. Oh. Uh, don't know. He's, he plays for the Broncos now. Reese Walsh. No. Nah. Cobbo. Cobbo. Uh -huh. Yep. And he tore, he tore him up. Yeah. And like, I remember watching it going, who the, who's this fucking kid? Tearing us up. So on Cobbo in playing for Wyndham. There you go. There you go. Watch his face with a couple of those blokes. I think later that year was when he played fullback for them in that grand final. Yeah. And he yep. absolutely blew it away. Was that for Wyndham? Was it Wyndham Redcliffe playing in the grand final? Or did he end up playing for someone else that year? No, I think it was for Wyndham Manly. Yeah. Yeah, it was for Wyndham? Yeah. And he just like, typical so on Cobbo, wrist everything, constantly did just like all in, all in. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Wyndham Manly. This is a paid advertisement from BetterHelp, our show partner this week. It's the start of a new year and we all have our own resolutions. Some of us want to get fit, some want to learn a new skill, and some of us want to watch more footy. But there's a lot of us that probably just want to improve our mental health. If you're thinking of getting a hand with your mental game, get in touch with BetterHelp. Their services are entirely online and designed to work around you and your schedule. We all need a little guidance from time to time. As the largest online therapy provider in the world, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash bloke. That's betterhelp.com 
slash bloke. So you get 10% off if you go to betterhelp.com slash bloke. Dolphins defeat the Capras 58 to 6. Uh, wow. That's all I've got to say is holy. Uh, because this wasn't like a Dolphins first grade side. This was essentially what they'd be running out with their Dolphins side, I'd assume. Um, like, okay, look, the talent, matter of fact, I'll just go, everything impressed me. Everything, not just the talent, but how fluid they looked, how, uh, like, they didn't look disconnected, all of their plays, getting to certain points in the field, people hitting lines at the right times. Like, I was genuinely shocked at how good they looked. And I'm going to be honest, as a massive Broncos man, it made me go, like, if we don't make sure we sort, not sort ourselves out, because we have, I hope, made the grand final, but if we don't make sure we almost keep our foot on their throat, in three or four years, like, it genuinely might be a battle for Brisbane. Um, now, I know Brisbane is, Broncos are a far bigger club, but when you're talking about uh, results on the field and you look at these young guys that are, you know, building through for the next few years, I tell you what, I was super, super impressed with this Dolphin side. Yeah, so was I, and I think um, the continuity in the side was very impressive. I was, I was honestly mind blown. I couldn't yeah. believe it. When you consider, like, yeah, you know, a year ago today, essentially, this franchise played its first ever game. It's only be a year down the track, and you look at the first grade squad, the depth they've got, and then you watch this reserve grade side with only a couple of first graders in there who most of them probably won't be in the starting team. And, and like, the only ones that were playing probably just forced their way into it. Yeah, and you know? <laughs> yeah, and like probably the best player from this game has forced his way in, and probably the second or third best is going to miss the squad. It's yeah. very, very impressive where the Dolphins are sitting at the moment. Well, it's, it's Wayne Bennett 101, isn't it? It's like he doesn't just worry about the first grade and the bench and the fringes. It is the bottom up, getting systems in place so that when you get through and you're ready to play NRL, it is the same systems. Everyone's on the same page. There's nothing new. And we sat here and spoke a week ago about the Dolphins' crazy depth mm. after a year in the NRL, and it just showed that... Even bigger. Yeah. Like, it's even bigger than... Oh, I don't know about you boys, but I did not expect... Like, 1-17, to 17, I'm sitting there going... <laughs> There wasn't really anyone I was watching going, oh, yeah, he's, you know, he's 18 years old. He's, he's got a bit to go. Like, they were outstanding. And that was so good that I was like, okay, maybe the Capras are just like, you know, not the best Queensland Cup side. I went and checked. I think they finished fourth last year. Mm. Like the Capras aren't. Yeah, they're, good. Mm. they're a decent Q Cup side. I honestly couldn't believe it. Um, all right, you, I'll let you have testing you. I want to speak about my guy. Uh, yeah, Tessie, I thought he was tremendous, obviously playing left centre. I mean, we know that Tessie is capable of doing this sort of stuff. Um, obviously, that left wing spot is sort of up for grabs at the Dolphins. We're hearing Jack Bostock's a good shot to get it, but I don't know how you could possibly ignore Tessie New after that. Well, that, this is one of those situations where a trial can change your life. Like, you know, it all, that trial could have just got Tessie that little foot in front and then he gets that wing spot and he doesn't lose, doesn't lose it ever again. Like, potentially. That's yeah. how important these trials are. And you have a look at, you know, the way that he scored a lot of those trials coming off that left foot. I'll take that every day of the whole week on the Just wing. Just he's, he's thick boy, so in contact, he's, yeah. he's good yeah. in contact. We don't see what Bostock has been doing throughout the preseason, back end last year, whatever it might be. But all this chart of him starting over Tessie New, and it's like we're one trial in and Tessie has a first half hat trick. Look, we were all sitting here last week saying, well, surely Tessie's the front runner. But all the word coming out of the Dolphins, seemed, not Bostock. out of the Dolphins, but was that Bostock yeah. was the front runner. I think Tessie just put the foot down and said, no, 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 like I've been here, done it. I'm the man. And like we spoke about this, I think it was like last week or whatever, but people forget like Tessie knew, he debuted the Broncos at like 18 or something. Like it's not an easy feat. I know it was a struggling time, but he is a gun, an absolute gun. Mm. Uh, yeah, he was outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Look, I, I, what's ironic is like Bostock was also really good. Like, Very there, good, yeah. There yeah. wasn't anyone in that team, like Tafade on the other side, also really good. Yeah. Um, but the main guy I want to talk about uh, who I was genuinely blown away by his timing, by his, like just his, the full package was Kurt Donahue. Or Donahue, Donahue, how is it Donahue? How do you say it? Donahue, Donahue? I think it's Donahue, isn't it? Donahue, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Mate, he was in everything. He, like, he was involved essentially. Like, a lot of their tries, it was him squaring up his defence. He he looks like the full package. He genuinely looks like the full package. Uh, it's going to be – he played six, so I wonder what the – you know, can he play seven? Have you heard much about – Kurt Donny. Mate, I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. When Wayne debuted him last year, I sort of watched him and went, oh, yeah, 
okay, handy. But I, it was sort of, I believe that he played uh, some internationals at the end of last year. I think he played for Fiji um, at 5'8 and looked a lot better there. And um, that game the other night was the first time I've sort of sat back and gone, okay, I can see it now. Obviously, Wayne could see it a year ago. Uh, I'm not, sh- even watching him, I'm not completely convinced of what his best position will be. What, 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 when you look at him, what, what do you well, think? He played off the bench as nine last year. He played yeah. a lot of nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and in Q Cup, he played 5'8 centre and lock last year. Christ. Jeez. I think I love hearing that a guy can just play just for play wherever. I love that. Um, probably a six. Probably like a, a – well, if you had a really structured seven, probably six because he looks silky, like silky as. His ball playing, his timing, his, his delivery, like everything was just on point. I was – and I kept waiting for the moment, okay, he's going to throw a bad ball or he'll go a bit quiet here. But he was on the front foot. Essentially, the whole game. And it's funny when I look back at when I was watching him last year playing nine. I just thought, it doesn't look like a nine to mm. me. But I never saw him anywhere else. Mm. Looks much more natural out there. Yeah, it looks super comfortable. I um, yeah, like I, super impressed. It's just crazy to think. Okay, so where do they go? They've got Katoa, who is most likely a six. I'd say. I think yeah. so. At this and point, out and yeah. out six. Yeah. So you go. Okay, well that's it's going to be tough for Donahue to get that spot. He could be a – so many options, but he could be a terrific 14 for them, like as he was last true, year for five, true. six games where he can play nine, he can play six. Like he'd still have been in a lot of different positions. If he can play nine, why can't he jump on for 20 minutes as a ball playing yeah. lock sort of thing? And also cover the six, seven yeah. lock if he has to. The thing that just makes it hard is Cody Nicarima. Mm, yeah. no, he's like the perfect 14. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. seem like almost clones like on paper, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Um, he was pretty good in the uh, test matches last year as well. When the Fiji played a yeah. couple of games, scored a couple of tries. Um, yeah, you're right. He'd be a great utility, but probably a bit hard for him with, with Cody there. The future's bright for the Dolphins. Yeah. And I think, you know, because they're a new club, everyone thinks they're a new club. Like they just, not everyone, a lot of people, they just popped up. They're a new club. But their junior system is arguably as good or if not better than any in the competition. Well, like, I think they're the only team in the NRL you can go from under sixes to first grade. Yeah, so Dolphins, uh-huh. yeah. And this is how good their junior system is. So we were coming through this, and so this is like, what, fucking 20 years ago now. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> holy shit. Uh, so we had the Clydesdales, which was reserve grade Broncos, full of first graders, and then, you know, young beaks flying around the edge there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so we would play their Dolphin side, which was just Q Cup. Just Q Cup. Now, there might have been some ex NRL players that had come back there, but they weren't in an NRL system. And they'd beat us sometimes. They'd win the Q Cup. Like, that's how good of a junior system Redcliffe have. Uh, they can literally mix it with reserve grade NRL sides. Um, and this was 20 years ago. So, their systems, like, think about how powerful it is that you can get an eight year old and he can be part of the system that you want to build all the way into first grade. So, that's, that's what the scary thing, like, even the Broncos don't have that. Like, they've got multiple teams that they take. They've got woe to go, start to finish, and also they've got a stack of cash. They're the second wealthiest club in the NRL already. Um, Jeez. I, I, look, it's it's just a trial, but I'm sitting there going, this, this team in the next four or five years could be a genuine threat um, with the pool they have, with the systems they have, as long as, the, you know, the next coach up is, is does a good job. But... There's no reason to say why they can't be a powerhouse or a threat with all the resources they have, all the juniors, all the systems in place, and all the history as well. All the history. Um, it is exciting to, for the Dolphins, like super exciting. It's unbelievable the spot they find themselves in. Just, I cannot believe how quickly it's just all come together. Yep. It's just... Another it's, year of Wayne waving his wand. Oh, my Oof. God. Uh, also, the seven as well. He'd come out of nowhere. I'd, I'd never even seen the seven before. He came out of nowhere. He was electric. He reminded, honestly, he reminded me a little bit of Jerome Law, the way he, he's, his footwork, his just advantage play footy. Um, also a little bit like Milford to a degree. Because yep. like he, he, um, he wasn't really a structured seven per se, but he was dangerous. Every time he got the ball, you could see the defensive line almost like begin to kind of, I wouldn't say panic, but just you could almost see the anxiety of worrying about Trusting your outside man. I thought the um yeah, so is it uh, Burns? Burns. Burns. Jerome Burns, yeah. Yeah, I thought he was outstanding. Then you look at the fullback, Fuller. <laughs> Freaking he's got some ability, Fuller. Fuck. Night he reminds me of Preston Campbell. Yeah, he's so good to watch. Just 
just electric on his feet. Absolute nightmare for defences um, to, to tackle. Uh, I also liked um, their front row pairing, Bailey and uh, Jenkins. Yeah. I thought they were great as well. Just got through their work. Real, no frills, tough, tough ball carriers. I liked, um, I don't know if I pronounced correctly, is it Orion Keeley? Do we know the edge back row? Orin Keeley, yeah. Or, or, Orin Keeley. And Sim Beacon. Sim yeah. Beacon. He yeah, was Sim great he too. He was good, yeah. Keeley was uh, New South Wales 16s captain. He had a neck fracture, kept him out for almost three years of footy. Came back, captain New South Wales 19s. Wow. Obviously ended up at the Dolphins, Newcastle Knights Junior from Gosford, Central Coast area. But massive wraps on him and then obviously missed so much time, so much, so much of a key phase of his development. He looked good again on the weekend as well. I am excited to see him now he goes this season. I yeah. think he'll be a very good signing over the next two or three years. With an ageing pack up there, I think he'll really come into his own. Such an impressive trial. Like, I, yeah, I'm genuinely shocked. And look, it's a trial we always say. Like, that's, that's the last time I'm going to say it. Guys, it's a trial. <laughs> Even next week and the week after, just remember, we understand that it's a trial. But we can only work off the information we had. Uh, what we saw, but Dolphins looked absolutely phenomenal, like phenomenal. Um, anyone else, boys? Can I just give a little shout out from the Capras? Didn't get much of an opportunity, but I thought the fullback was very talented. Mm. Last name Moore, good uh, footwork. Yeah, very well. I, I actually I had a few guys mess me up. Apparently, like an Australian touch football player. Oh, that makes sense. Coming to the league system, so that makes complete sense, yep. as you said. Yeah, but I thought he looked very talented in yep. limited opportunities. Oh, shout out as well, uh, Trey Brown at nine. Handy, like. Matter of fact, I'm just going to name one to 17, all right? Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. It was fucking unbelievable. Um, yeah, anyway, Dolphins. Uh, very, very exciting. In a nutshell, fins up. Fins out. Fins out. I hope they change it to fins out. Um, <laughs> Time will tell. Time will tell. Time is the, the truth teller of all. I just made that up. I've always said that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Manly defeats South 68 to 6. Um, this was behind closed doors, as in, as in there was no live stream. You could watch it live. Anyone drive three hours to do that? Club in crisis. But, but yeah. One of, our, one of our colleagues did, Ella, big Manly fan. Yep. Uh, made the trip up there, um, gave a bit of a detailed report. Do we put the, do we put the red pen through the Rabbitohs now? 50 point curse? Has it claimed its first scout? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was literally there like. Not, maybe not even New South Wales Cup, like as in mostly, we'll just say mostly New South Wales Cup. Yeah, so. but 50 point curse is 50 <laughs> point curse, isn't it? So, okay. Um, okay. Is it, do you want to do it? What? Put the curse, like say they're done. What? You think, can, well, I'm just not going I just think it's worth thinking about. Okay. I just think it's worth thinking about. Um, Ella did say that she went up and had a look and said, look, Brooksy was pretty good. Mm. Um, obviously Ben Travojevic, uh, after signing his extension, must have been yesterday, they announced it yesterday, three year extension, got a couple of tries. Uh, she said she could tell that Maddie was behind the post that went up on Bloke because he was calling out the fact that it was an under strength Rabbitoh side, so explicitly. <laughs> she goes, it was definitely him making excuses. Oh no, him, so. I was the one that posted. Was it? Yeah. Making excuses for the for the bunny. Quite, I said it on every post <laughs> on the trials. I said like details of what it was. Every single post, so the Dolphins, the Young Guns beat Capra, yep. Capras, and then the Broncos, younger players, Beat Winham and then on the anyway, is what it is. Yeah, is what it is. Um, uh, <laughs> this is hard because we didn't see it. Uh, ben Travoyevic scoring a hat trick, outstanding. Uh, I guess positives if Schuster is touch and go mm -hmm. to get that edge back row. Positives mm -hmm. is they got a guy Ben Travoyevic that looks like he's going to get that spot. It's exactly what that club needed is yeah. pressure heaped on Schuster. I go, mate, if you don't perform, you're not starting edge four. Simple as that. And for Benny Chaboy, we just come out and score that first half hat trick. Per exactly what they would have wanted. And exactly what he needed as well, because, you know, f first of all, his debut, I think he got a concussion in like the first five seconds. Yeah. Um, but he was also cursed with the Javojevic name. No, I don't say curse in a negative way, but you're expected to just come in and Expectation. Like play for New South Wales. Like yeah. pretty much in the first game, you say, oh yeah, getting caught up in New South yeah. Wales. So like very easy to go, oh, okay, he, you know, maybe he's not gonna have as much impact, but A, he's still super young. B, geez, his body is suited for edge back row. Holy shit, like big, strong, agile. Um, sometimes players just need an extra year or two there's no, there's no reason why Ben Travoyevic can't be a top-tier edge-back rower. Yeah, he had a lot of pressure and expectation coming into this league. Obviously, the brother of those two. But there was – like, I remember being told him coming through the juniors, he could be the best one of them. Mm. You just sit there and go, fuck, that's a lot to deal there's with. There's no way. There's no way. How could that possibly – How could that possibly happen? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, hopefully injuries fall his way this year and hopefully he can play some good footy and I agree with Timmy. Pressure on Schuster is what they need. Well, look, you know, obviously I want Schuster at his best, but a bench of Vojevic, Olakowatu, edge back row, I'm happy with that. Yep, great. Like that's, that's not something that I'm going, ooh, edges are a bit flimsy. Uh, reportedly, uh, Billy Moore was strong. Luke Brooks killed it. A lot of people will go, oh, it was just a trial and it was against New South Wales Cup, but it's also like he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Like, that's good. Yeah. As, you know, like you can't just say – so if he if he was if he came out and he was quiet or played poorly, everyone would be like, "Oh my god, New South Wales yeah. Cups towed him up." Then he comes out and he, he tears them apart, and it's like, "Oh yeah, it's just a trial." It's like, well, he showed he's a, a substantial level above the New South Wales Cup. On top of that, imagine a world like last year. Did the six that play for Manly in this trial come out and tear up like Brooks did? He might have played well, but I don't think he dominated the game the way Brooks did, which shows you that's that's a good thing. It means you've upgraded your six role. But also, how many players? get pushed back to a game like this, probably, I mean, not as much Brooksy. Brooksy, they'd be trying to get time under the belt for the new club. But like a Ben Trebojevic, going back to a lesser level than you, coaches want to be like, they want to see them go out and kill it, not be complacent and go, oh, I'm just filling a spot here, I'll play a few minutes, play yeah. a half maybe, be back with the big boys next week in a proper trial. To come out and kill it, it's a huge attitude thing to go, you go out there, you give it all, you smash them and you show that you are better than And also, like, we're talking about Luke Brooks here. This guy's been on a million dollars for, let's just say, five to six years. If you wondered whether he's fully fallen out of love with the game, this should show you that, no, this guy's still hungry. Like, this guy still wants to play good footy. Very easy for him to go, yep, go out, just do me job, get off. No, this is way beneath me. I haven't played reserve grade in so long. You know, I'm a millionaire and all this kind of stuff. He didn't. He went out, ripped and teared, tore him apart, said thanks for coming, went home. Mate, I love seeing on social media just the picture of Brooksy in full kit, mm. with all due respect, Hammy, mm. just in a different fucking T-shirt. It was great. Yeah. And also, he just – and I was like little snippets – but he just looked more energetic. I know. Looked like a footballer again. He looks. Yeah. He just looked energetic. You know, it's. I'm probably being biased because I want him to succeed so bad. But just that short ball that he hit with um, Benny Trevojevic. What do you got to say over there? Just confirming that is a tear coming down the cheek of Hammy. <laughs> Star wipe. Get out of here. Get, out of here. <laughs> get off my shot. Uh, no, look. You spot on though, Guru, and uh, and can be big, big smile on his face. Haven't seen that for a while from Brooksy. <laughs> Wish him well, but, you know, a little, little bit emotional as well. <laughs> if I've been honest. If I've been honest. We always expect you to be honest, Hammy. Yep. Um, yeah, look, uh, from the south side, there's not much to say. Like, Resi side, there was a mostly, at least in the first half, it was a mostly first grade side, I think, from Manly. Yeah, they got pumped and that's not a good thing. Um, but what, what, do you, what do you say? Put it in the swag, move on to next Yeah, one. you move on. And also... It's a really good lesson for these young boys to go, oh, like, okay. Like, you know, I killed it last year in New South Wales Cup or under-19s or whatever, but I still got a ways to go to be in first grade. Sometimes that can light a fire up them. And, and also, you know, not that I have any evidence that they need humbling because there's literally none, but sometimes it's good to have your younger players humbled a little bit because they come through the grades and they just tail everyone up and they think that oh well i'm i should be playing first grade and why haven't i got the three-year deal and why isn't the coach giving me a shot in the second or third trial and then this happens and you go and they go oh okay you know what maybe i'll just pump the brakes a bit just get through my work do me apprenticeship and i'll be ready yeah. maybe in 12 or 24 months yeah the only one i will touch on for the bunnies was i think Braden burns named it fullback yeah. mm. and not listed on their side i don't know if it might not be a part of the top 30. he signed with um the resi side i've always been a believer in braden Burns. i like braden it's just injuries i think so many injuries yeah, yeah. but like i was going to say like with the campbell graham injury and we'll get to the bunny shortly and all of a sudden <clears throat> jack white and unavailable to start the season i was like i've always thought braden burns has been a good footballer who's just been so luckless with injury but not going to matter too much if we play in New South Wales Cup. Very good guy to have in your squad, though. Mm. Sounds like Ty Munro could miss a few weeks at the start of the season, too. Yep. So, could become relevant. Could be handy if, if Troll goes down. Like, if Troll has an injury, could mm. be a handy guy to bring up, especially with Campbell Graham being out. So, you'd assume Tyron Munro will be on, a, on the wing. Um, but, yeah, anyway, great news for Manly. That's how you want to start the year. Uh, Manly, by the way, $2.36 in that round one game against the Bunnies. Bunnies still dollars sixty. Really? Big value there. Big value there because Seabold notoriously likes to start hot. Yeah. Even at the Broncos when we won the spoon, we, we dominated the first two games. He won the preseason cup last year. Speculation around whether Cody Walker goes to Vegas. Yep. Missing um, a few people. a few other injuries to come. Oh. So that's heaps of value. It's delicious. Yeah. 
There you go, Hammy. Thanks for that one. Pleasure. All righty. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> What? That wasn't good? That was great. That was, that was really good. Why, why'd you stop? Well, that's, that was the end of it. Like, it's time. Oh, that was, then we'll start. I thought you were saying, it's time. Oh. For the rubber to hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> Not back this week? Not back this week. It could be. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Tire sponsors, reach out. Reach out. Spoiler alert. Uh, it's time for the rubber to hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> Brought you by Bridgestone. <laughs> Not an ad. No, no. So if there's, competing, <laughs> if there's competing tire companies that are interested, <laughs> yeah. we'll go back and delete that little bit. Need that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, time for some CBAs from other clubs. Obviously, we've been through a, a thousand CBAs at the Broncos, the Dolphins. Kind of meant. Oh, quickly before we get Humphreys from Manly. Apparently, he killed it. So the yarn coming out that was he was killing it in preseason. He might fight for that 14 jersey. Could have a schmalky for that 14 jersey. Um, mm. Apparently, he killed it for trial against us. Guru, speak to me. Where do you want to start in some of the CBAs you've got at clubs that uh, could be anything either this year or in the future? Uh, I'm happy to start at the South Sydney Rabbitohs, okay. if we all are. Um, so South Sydney Rabbitohs, obviously, Ty Munro is a guy we spoke about last year, debuted. Um, I think it was around eight or around nine or something along those lines last year. We've all seen the ability. Very raw at the moment. Um, I think it's the news is just broken too. He's going to miss the first four weeks of the season. Collarbone injury. Uh, but I think Ty Munro has got serious potential to be a superstar. Yeah. Even his debut against the Warriors. Just that, just that je ne sais quoi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's got. That's what he's got. The je ne sais quoi. Uh, but sometimes like, again, you could look at stats and, and not all stats are equal, you know. It's these like little moments in games where you see the the players that just have that extra little special specialness about them, and I think Munro has that. He's got that thing about him too that you see with players sometimes. The ball just bounces to him mm. every single time. Yeah, and it's you know I remember he scored a few tries in the uh, I think it was the New South Wales Cup Grand Final last year, uh, and I had a post man. People were like oh he you know he just stood on the wing and put the ball down. It's like sure. There's a reason why guys like him are always in the right spot. They've yeah. just got the instincts to be there. Yeah. I mean, Alex Johnson's a perfect example of that. You, you can't tell me that if anyone was on the left wing for South Sydney, they break fucking Ken Irvine's record. Yeah, that's Please. craziness. That's craziness. Yeah. There's, there's an art in always being there at the right time, always finishing, the timing, everything. And, and Munro, for me, super special kid. I, I cannot wait. Um, I, th I think he'll probably end up fullback. Maybe in the centres, uh, but I'd be happy to see him on the wing. He is special. And he's still got that young man's body at the moment. Mm. When you have a look back at, you know, without putting him in this mould, but he, you know, he reminds me of when you used to watch GI and Latrell when they were young and you look back at the tapes, you go, oh my God, they're so skinny. Yeah. Ties like that right now. When he feels out, ooh. It's going to be scary. Yep. Um, who have you got at South Sydney Rabbitohs? Yeah, a lot of the ones that I've gone through in this list when I heard we were doing a – a CBA show and I thought I'm sitting next to Guru the king of the CBA and I'm like jeez I'm going to have to lift my game for this one so uh, an early shout out mate I actually got onto the blower to a good mate of mine Scotty Woodward he's a talent identification man over at the Bulldogs was at the Tigers and the Storm in the past was behind the Harry Grant swap deal to the Tigers lots of good things right hand man to sort of match Maguire did a lot in the Kiwi camp so I've thought oh I need to match Guru here so I need to come up with some of the best of the best and okay. too lazy to do my own research I spoke to Scotty so he got me on board with uh, a lot of good ones that I was able to then go and do my own research on all that being said they're generally players outside the top 30 or rookies coming through at the bunnies Talis Duncan I, I just love what I see from him obviously spent a bit of time in the top grade last season but it's hard not to make comparisons uh, to Cam Murray, similar build, like just look awkward to tackle, mm. seem to have great attitude. I, I've loved everything I've seen from him and there's a bit of chat of, you know, probably comes off the bench this season for them. We've spoken to Matty about it in depth uh, throughout the preseason. I'd love to see him starting on an edge, but maybe they do want to just blood him a bit slower, which is fine. But yeah, I think really good signs for him. The thing about Talis Duncan is I think he, uh, slow burn is too too aggressive of a word, like mm. slow burners if we're going to see. But he's going to be the guy that you're going to hear Rabbitohs fans just frothing over him. And there's going to be other, you know, fans that maybe don't watch 80 minutes of rugby league of the Rabbitohs each week. So they'll be like, I don't I don't get it. You know what it's going to be similar like? It's going to be Campbell Graham all over, I reckon, mm. where the first few years, unless you had a real close eye on him, you'd go, yeah, he's, he's a good outside back. 
I think Talis Duncan is going to be even Cam Murray to a degree. Uh, he was a bit of relatively ish slowish burn. Um, I think Talis Duncan is going to be the same. Where when you speak to a Rabbitohs fan, they're going, "We can't live without him." Outside looking in, they're going to be like, "Oh, he's just another forward." And then in two or three years, people are going to go, "Oh, okay, this guy's special." And, and if he does take off for them, and look. Maybe they don't start the year with him as a starter and an 80-minute man, but if they can even by mid-season get him to being that, what's the criticism that we've had with the Rabbitohs over the past 12 months? It's been they've been probably a little bit light on in middles, especially they've had a lot of injuries there. They lose Harm Selle this season. If he can become a big-minute edge there, allows them to put Jai Arrow into that middle rotation. It just strengthens it so much. So big prospects for him, and if he can come good this year... Yeah. You mentioned that he's sort of in that Cam Murray mould, and I completely agree. I'm almost disappointed that him and Cam are going to be in the same side because mm-hmm. I reckon 13 will be Duncan's best spot. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But, gee, South Sydney, what a spot to be in. Even better, they got him from the Roosters a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah. You'd be devastated with that. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Trust him to know that too. He's probably been stinging about it for the last two or three years. Uh, is it correct in regards to my analysis on Campbell Graham as a Rabbitohs fan, Matty? 100%. Know- 100%. It was such a slow move for Campbell Graham. Like, a lot of people were like, oh, he does nothing. He's, he's overrated. He played the first, I think he played the first 50 games or whatever on the wing. And then uh, it was when he came into centre that people started taking notice. Yeah, but Rabbitohs fans loved him. Like, oh, from day from day dot from his yeah. debut against the Dragons because he was he was at school when he debuted. Everyone er, there was raps coming through. He was um, in er, all the pathways. Like all Rabbitohs fans always loved him. But um, yeah, it took a while for other fans to, to jump on board. So I think that's bang on. Hammy, any schmokies in the Rabbitohs? One name that just stands out to me because it's just a great rugby league name, Hazen Mellers. Great choice. Yeah, and it's spelled H A I Z Y N. Now outside back. Came through Queensland sort of systems. Really interesting story, actually. He's uh, the young bloke of Vince Mellars. Played first grade a while ago. Um, he's actually a basketball player that came over in 2020. So mm. big, tall frame. Very yep. talented. Has come through up in Queensland. Yep. South Sydney are very high on him. So I don't know if you'll see him this year, but yeah. I think in the next two years you will see him in first grade. He was ahead of uh, uh, Munro a year or two ago in their pecking order, but um, been a bit injury prone. So, oh, wow. Had a wonder a few years ago. Yeah, he was, and he, yeah he, he was the one they thought was going to really pop up, which I, I think he still will, but obviously Munro's just had a big 18 months. Yeah. Wow. Okay, there you go. There's a couple of CBAs from the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Can I throw a few more names at you? Won't go into too much detail, but a guy that I think over the next two or three years I'll be talking about a lot is Jai Gray. He's a 5'8 coming through there. He's from the Gold Coast. Uh, Malmeninga Cup, 5'8 of the year, 2022. Reminds me of Luke Keary in the early days. Mm. I think that over the next few years at South Sydney, he could become very relevant. I think he'll be the next guy after Cody Walker at 5'8". Tom Fletcher is a back rower you might see at some point this year. He's very imp- he's impressed them a lot in their preseason. And as far as 5'8 goes, you've still got Dion, who played for Tonga mm. during the off-season. There you go. Very talented too. Matty, you got any CBAs? I covered most of them. Uh, the Liam DeBlanc is another one. He, mm. he's, he was part of the Queensland emerging squad. Um, Played a, a lot of Jersey flag last year. Uh, I think he played. I think he should he should play a bit of New South Wales Cup this year. So he's one to keep an eye on as well. Okay, now the Sharky CBAs. Uh, I want to toss one out. I won't steal your boy. Um, Peru. Yep. Young half. Uh, he actually trialed last year against the Knights, if I recall correct, correctly. And he, I really was impressed with him. Really impressed with him. Now I know Trindle's young. I know Trindle's young. Uh, so maybe Peru goes to another club. I hope I'm saying that right. It's Peru or it's Peru. 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 Yeah. Peru. Um, so he may have to go to another club to get that crack if Trindle does work out. But if Trindle doesn't work out, uh, I really liked what I've seen so far of, a, of the young fella. He was great in that trial last year that we watched. Uh, had a good New South Wales Cup season last year. You got him. You got Dykes as well. Mm. We've all seen a little bit of um, who... I reckon any of them could end up at 5'8 over the next few years. Mm. So Cronulla, as far as their halves go, they're in a very good spot. They've obviously got a handy halfback for the next six years, uh, but they're in a good spot, the Sharkies, especially when you lose a guy like Matt Moylan to have this much talent coming through, mm. in a good spot. Uh, my boy, Ido, yeah. yep, big, big fan. Um, New South Wales Cup Player of the Year, I think two years ago now. It's been a long burn, uh, but I still think he is going to be a proper star. My player comp is Val Holmes for him, the way that he moves. Oh. You go watch his highlights, it genuinely looks like It's Val one. all over. <laughs> yeah. um, the Sharkies, probably, I, I would argue, right up there with the hardest back lines to get into, mm. just because everyone's an 8 out of 10. And they're pretty consistent too. Yep. I know I know Talakai, people have their issues with his defence, but again, if you really, like, yeah, okay, he does need to shore his defence up, 
But if you go and look at his attack, it's like honestly second to none. It, it's actually it's, it might be playing out perfectly for you with Euro because you've been on him for such a long time and it has been such a slow burn, hasn't got his crack. People will be starting to doubt your room why he hasn't got to go, but when he does and kills you, you would be like, told you for years. It, it may be, uh, I can see, because there was a recent article saying that he had a meeting every week with Fitzgibbon, asking where he was at, what was going on. So it may not be at the Sharks this happens. Um, I do think there's a chance we could see a mid-year transfer with him uh, because I would be shocked if there aren't other clubs constantly applying to the Sharks going, Hey, mate, are you willing to do a deal to get RO across? There's a lot of established first-grade centres that teams could go after in this league. I would take a punt on him before a lot of them. He Honestly, with the price he would come at and his age and what he's already done in Q Cup, because he also played really well in sorry, New South Wales Cup last year as well. He, had, he averaged the most post-contact metres of any player in the competition, I think, all year. Um, so he's, what he's, Val is a, a higher top-end speed guy, whereas Ido is... Um, stronger in contact. So that, that's the only real difference. Like that's a bit of a difference. Between if I was going from centres on the market, bang for buck, bring a guy in, he's the guy I'd get probably number one, maybe number two. Value-wise, he's my number one guy that I'd be going for. Yeah. Uh, so really exciting for him. Um, Dykes is another guy I'm, I'm interested to see because it was a couple of years ago. Like I think he did his ACL not last year, the year before, maybe last year. Last year. But there were huge raps on Dykes coming through. So it'll be interesting to see how he bounced back. Yeah, I think that 5-8 spot, you know, obviously Trindle's got first dibs on it. But, um, you know, if Trindle doesn't knock it out of the park, plenty of pressure. He went up on uh, there was a social media post from the Sharks, yeah, uh, in the last day or two. You had Dykes and Nico kind of like modelling the new kit. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good sign, isn't it? If they're, if they're out there yeah. front and centre on the... It actually, like, it sounds like funny of like, oh, it's social media who gives a shit. But it actually is quite telling who the social media team is focusing on. Yeah. Because yep. usually they've gotten wind of where that player is standing in yep. the, the ranks. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it could be a really good sign. Really good sign. Uh, some other guys at the Sharkies, young centre. Gabriels has come over from the St. George of Laura Dragons. Uh, not from the Dragons, from the Canterbury Bulldogs. Scored a triple last week in SG Ball. Sam Stone, Stone Street's another winger there. Obviously, it's a very hard back line to get into, but he's got star potential. Is Anderson still there? I was about to mention. Yeah. Oh, uh, Anderson. Is it... There's there's Ak Atkinson Atkinson yeah Atkinson. Atkinson I really like him he's come through the Falcon system can play anywhere in the back line once again killed in the trial too didn't he I think. yeah very good yeah he can yeah. play fullback halves center wing wherever you want him to play uh, and a little smoky mate uh, a kid that I actually coached when he was a kid so he could be the ultimate CBA <laughs> no I drove him to his first Harold Matt <laughs> three oh, years no ago yeah so that's hectic one of the great names too Richie Whalebone so shout out <laughs> oh, stop it. shout out to Ricardo do me some favors mate uh, <laughs> Richie Whalebone that is outstanding yeah oh have whale on a few blokes anyway. <laughs> That wasn't my best. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't say it was your worst. But <laughs> uh, let's go to Sydney Roosters. Roosters. Uh, obviously, my boy's here, Wong. <laughs> uh, I am huge on him. Is there a Wong joke anywhere? No, you got that one, Wong. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can Waiting do no for Wong. It. Can't go Wong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Sia Wong uh, has got, I've said a number of times, potential to be one of the best forwards in rugby league in a very short amount of time. So... Hopefully he gets a starting spot for the Chooks this year. Once again, very hard second row to get into, but he would be my starting back row for the Roosters this year. Yeah, wow. Well. Timmy, anything at Roosters? Just big hypes, hype on it. And I know, Guru, you've spoken a bit about him in the past in the family, but Robert Toyer, yep. who big, I've um, just heard such good yeah. things coming out of the club around him. And I'm big excited standard. to sort of keep an eye out for him and yeah. have a look at him this year. Once again, injuries have just completely sideswiped in the last two years. But Still relatively young, though. Still very young, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a heap of ability. Very, a very strong centre. Uh, and the Roosters are going to need centres over the next few years with a few guys leaving and whatnot. Yeah, I wonder whether that's their kind of Joey Manu backup plan. I think there's a very good sniff that it would. Yeah. That's what they'd be thinking with um, Rob Toyer. Is Sandon Smith still considered a CBA? Probably not. I had him in here. I know people will blow up about that, but um, I actually didn't realise this time last year how good he was, mm. to be yeah. honest with you. He impressed me so much. Yeah, he was throughout great. The season. He was great. If I was a club looking for a halfback hooker or a 5'8". Mm. Uh, White at the Roosters, mm. also another forward that I think um, you might have something special about him, a bit of something-something. 
There's a bit there. Um, some other guys, Kevin eye on uh, Moriarty. He's a hooker coming through their system at the moment. He's in the top 30, but he's obviously got a few guys ahead of him. Mm. Uh, Xavier Va'a, who's a big middle forward. I think he will become important over the next few years. There's another guy, uh, Celesti Fochetti, who's a middle 13. I've watched him play the last few years in, in uh, like SG Ball. I think he's got some of the best tackle technique oh, I've really? ever seen. Absolutely wax blokes. Are we talking Alan Tongue areas? Yeah, but like... Or a bit higher. Puts shots on. Yeah, okay. Puts proper shots on. So, beak areas. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they got a few guys coming through there. Another one is Blake <laughs> Steep to watch over the next few years coming through. Uh, okay, on to the next team, the Penny Panthers. Penrith Panthers. Uh, Maverick Guy is the first guy on my list. Doing a few whispers, though. Uh, I misread the text. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sounds like, I, yeah, I, I got a text saying that Maverick Guy might be going to England. That means for the World Club Challenge. <laughs> which makes <laughs> heaps more fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, sorry, we just spent five minutes off air going, what the hell? <laughs> Maverick Guy is off to Wigan. What the hell's going on there? Like Penrith, he's a young gun coming through. He's playing really well. He's at the best club in the comp, and he's going to go over to Wigan. Like, what the hell? And then makes uh, heaps more sense. All makes of a, a lot more sense. Yeah. So there's two forwards. I think you should be watching this year at Penrith: Maverick Guy and Liam Henry. Uh, Liam Henry, I think, could really jump out of the ground in that Spencer Lee. Who's, who's the centre gun centre that's coming through? Um, uh, there's a few. There's Jesse McLean. Jesse McLean. Yeah. Keep an eye on Jesse McLean's younger brother, Casey. I reckon he. Jesus, how old is he? Fourteen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's SG ball this year. Okay, okay. And this is what you come here for. Okay, no, no, I love it. I love it. Um, who else we got? How did here? Jack Cleary go on the weekend? He went good. Yeah, a lot like Nath runs the ball a lot. Mm. Very strong uh, because he's a Cleary. There's a lot of people out to tarnish his name and whatnot. Yeah, Put a lot yeah. of pressure on him. But unless he scores seventeen thousand tries, he's not good. Yeah, no, nah, he did really scored a try on the weekend. Set up a few. He was very, very good. So oh, is he eighteen now? Eh? Yep, eighteen. Yeah. Potentially nineteen. But yeah, young. So great name. Great, great name. name. I tell you what, though, you're open. If you're not quick, you open yourself up for a bit of banter. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> uh, a guy that I know you've done some um, reactions to, Iongi, the fullback. Love Iongi. Yeah, just the crazy footwork. Crazy footwork. Um, probably going to have to go somewhere else to get a crack. I think. I think so. Works hard too. It's like there's two of him on the field. His meters are insane. He might even be one of the top meters in New South Wales Cup last year. I think. My favourite at Penrith, though, and I reckon he apparently Jerome Luai is racing the clock for this World Club Challenge. And the guy I spoke about a few weeks ago, Jack Cole, mm. young 5'8 coming through. Apparently, he's a chance to play in this World Club Challenge over oh, wow. Dane Laurie and Schneider. So, mm. Jack Cole, remember that name at Penrith. Locked her in. Just wait, let me write that down, Guru. <laughs> Jack. Just on one that you did mention there, Schneider, is he too experienced now to be a CBA or is he one that you'd he's still you'd a CBA, still throw in there? You reckon? Well, yeah, yeah, he played like four or five games, didn't he? Uh, he's got twelve for the Raiders, twelve oh, okay. for Hull Kingston. Fair enough. Yeah, Fair enough. okay, no, no, not the CBA. Off the uh, off the Adelaide production line, he's still getting, he's still recovering from getting dumped by the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, dogs. terrible dogs. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, uh, w watching him play a few games, the Raiders, he looks looks good. I thought I was actually, in all jokes aside, obviously he didn't get dumped by the Raiders, but I was always really surprised that they let him go. I yep, thought there same. was plenty of potential there as a young fella probably more of a, a six than a seven yeah and I think they obviously had jackie white in mm. there um but i still think he's got plenty offer the other one to watch in the back row is harrison hassett who i don't know if you'll see him this year uh but one with another bright future younger brother of triple h he's double h <laughs> nice <laughs> good you're back there you go what a bounce back yeah they're no longer with us, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be back. And what a segment that'll be. That'll be, <laughs> I mean, they'll be their own segment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's go. Uh, yeah. One more. One more. Uh, Steve Price's son, Riley, yeah. has joined the, the Panthers. Ooh. Yeah, he goes. Well, he debuted for the Cowboys. For the Cowboys. He? And yeah. like, what a team. What a club to go to. Oh, like, obviously, man. Cowboys stacked in the back row. Um, yeah, it's great for them. Great for him. Okay, now down to your beloved Canberra Raiders, Timmy. And one of the clubs that really has gone aggressive into their juniors, Ricky Stewart, has come out and basically said, like, we've gone aggressive juniors. I think it's smart. We spoke about it uh, almost at the start of last year, mm -hmm. that instead of going and spending a mozza on top-tier players, I, we, we all, I think we all agreed that he should go aggressive in the guys coming out of school, and they have done that. Speak to me, Timmy. 
Yeah, a few there. The one, obviously, top of everyone's list and, and the, everyone, the one that we're all looking out for is Chevy Stewart this year. Come down from the Shire, been down in the capital for a couple of years now. He's only 18, played a ton of New Wales Cup last year, was pretty good there. Nine tries, 78 tackle busts, which is very impressive for a kid of that age. Pappenhausen areas? Very kind of. Pappenhausen areas. Just goal kicker as well, uh, just small. So, like, we don't go high have a, a daily chat about him, don't we? And whether or not he'll be ready to go for round one this year. Trials are going to be very telling. He's going to, going to have an opportunity to get a start this year. Looks like they might be leaning other ways at the moment. Xavier Savage is one who had really fallen off the radar at the Raiders in the last sort of 12 to 18 months. All reports are that he's blitzing pre season, turning some heads, more so as a winger than a fullback at the moment. But yeah, shock. Who saw that coming? But uh, yeah, so I, I can't wait to see Xavier come out in the, the trial games. But Xavier, uh, Michael Hammy, we were talking about off air. I'll, I'll give this one to you, mate, actually. Yeah, I made a few calls uh, back to Canberra. Yeah, I'm from Canberra. Just quickly, uh, uh, just so the people know, we actually tried to get that hat off his head. But he told us he's contractually obligated to wear it for the rest of his life. Got to get, got to get the sponsors happy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Asamua, I made some calls back to Canberra. Now, Asamua, um, hails from Griffith, I believe. Uh, played a lot of New South Wales Cup mm. so far. Devastating ball runner. I've, I've heard likened to a bit of a like a Brian To'o style Ooh, style winger okay. outside back. That gets me. Uh, that gets me going. Yep, big, big. You know, kind of a uh, bit of size on him. Been well, having plenty okay. of uh, Canberra milk. Plenty of Kingsley's M4s, M7s. Uh, Goodbury's bulking up down there in the yeah, capital. Okay. Um, so he's one that when I when I rang back to the capital the other day, they were saying Asamoah probably. Not until maybe the back half of the year, but uh, he could be he could be one to keep an yeah. eye out for and as well. The other one there that probably just passed CBA territory played 15 games last year off the bench, but apparently Adam Mariota oh, is killing it. I am so high on him as a as an explosive mm. front row because he's actually not that tall, mm. but he's real nuggety and just he's got a lot of punch about him. He's I'm Papaliti. Yeah, he, he oh, seriously wow. he yeah. looks like Papaliti. Even I mean I, I made the joke per se when they played the Knights. If you like squinted, it almost felt like Papali was playing, but it was Matori. He, um, uh... <laughs> is that I funny? I like that one. <laughs> I missed that one. If you squinted, is that the joke that you liked? <laughs> oh, okay. Another, <laughs> another one on the scoreboard. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, I, I'm really excited for him. Especially, you know, you've got to give Ricky a lot of credit for the way he's managed his uh, squad rotation of uh, you know looking at guys ages and going okay these got just development really like Tarpanair was outstanding the timing of that development now it looks like Atamata Ori is going to be that next guy hopefully yeah feels like he's got breakout season written on mm. his forehead to me yeah this year Very it also helps him that like in just in terms of minutes with big red Corey Horsburgh suspended to around four or so he's gonna get three rounds every chance he starts for the Raiders at prop heaps of chance to impress Another Raider that I'm still um, I'm still high on him. I'm still high on him. Uh, Trey Mooney. Yeah, I, I still think there's something there. I really, really do. Uh, forwards, as we know, sometimes can take an extra few years. You know, maybe he's a year or so later than we thought. And also, we got to remember that that Raiders forward pack is genuinely one of the hardest forward packs in the comp to get into. Like it's unbelievable. Uh, so it's so similar-ish to a degree to the Sharkies backline, where like, you know. You, you look at that forward pack, and if someone said it's the best forward pack in the comp, people go, oh, come on, mate. So they're not necessarily the best forward pack in the comp, but they're not actually that far mm. off, and yet they finish a bit lower on the table because, you know, other parts of their game. And so it's a hard forward pack to get into, but I, I think Trey Mooney, whether it's at the Raiders or somewhere else, I think, he's got, I think he'll make an impact in the NRL. Yeah, I'm far from giving up on Trey Mooney. I yeah. still think he's got a big future ahead of him. Uh, the other name is Ethan Strange, mm. who we haven't mentioned before, or we haven't mentioned today. Um... Look, people saw him in the New South Wales 19s playing centre and he brained it that night. Very impressive. I think he's more of a 5'8". Yeah, I think he's a 6. He left the Roosters as a 6. Um, and I think... It, look, it sounds like KO Weeks has sort of got a bit of a mortgage at the moment. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Ethan Strange at 5'8 at some point. Yeah, I think he... It's, it's funny. I think he's just got the right mixture of ball playing and ball running to be a 6. But at centre, as a, to be an out-and-out -out strike centre, does he have that... Top, top tier. And look, I can be wrong. I said the same thing. Guess what I said about Tony Staggs when he said, I was like, I don't know what position Tony Staggs is because, like, he's not big. He's not overly fast. Yep. He could play in the forwards, but he couldn't. And then, obviously, he becomes a special centre now. Wh why do you do that? Because he's way stronger than he looks. Like, he's unbelievably strong. And also, his first 10 metres is super explosive. So, 
obviously I can be wrong, but I look at him and I go, okay, he's a. I feel like he's the perfect mix for a modern day six at the moment. Yeah, without going into club preview territory again, I think the Raiders need one of Strange, Weeks or Stewart to hit the ground running this year. Because if none of them do, we're just so light on through the spine. Strange can obviously play centre or 5 eight, but if just one of them can get up to first grade quality standard quickly, it just solves a lot of headaches for us. If it doesn't, if they don't, I should say, and they are too raw and they're slow to burn, uh, it's going to be an issue. It'll be a tough year. Uh, last one to mention, he's obviously at the Parramatta Eels still, but Ethan Sanders, sounds like he is mm. going to make his way down to the nation's capital. Halfback, hopefully another one of these guys. Killed it in New South Wales versus Queensland. Yep, was, was like, had the aggressive. ball on a string. What I love about the Raiders is there's a clear plan. You don't even, you almost like don't even need Ricky to explain it to you. It's right there for you, yep. you know. And that's what, you know, if I'm a Raiders fan, now they're so gritty, they might make the eight. But if I'm a Raiders fan and go, okay, we come 10th this year, I'd almost be... Okay, I'll cop that because there's a clear plan in place for this younger generation to take over. It's clubs where you go, I, I don't even know what the direction is. We're, we're, we're recruiting some old guys, some young guys. You know, that's where you get concerned. What, what I'm excited for the Raiders is, is if this plan works the way they hope it is, in four years' time they should be pushing for a top four yeah. position. Yeah. Um, because they've got some of the best players in key positions for their age group in the squad right now. Uh, that's what excites me the Raiders. Um, anything else, Raiders, boys? Just double down, doubling down on Ethan Strange. I reckon he'll play sooner than later. Okay. Yep. Uh, now let's do. We've already done the Broncos. We've already done the Dolphins. Um, let's do the Doggies. You want me? We've got Timmy first. Yep. So the name coming out of there, Mitch Woods, Mitch Woods, Mitch Woods. Apparently an absolute star, young halfback, Steve Mortimer clone. Steve Mortimer clone, captain of the Jersey flag or SG ball winning side. Uh, Harold Matz last year. Harold Matz, and they won the premiership. He was a captain. He just signed a four year deal. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 18 year old, speed to burn, a great organiser. He's got an AFL background. Can only assume he's fit as a Good fiddle kicking. as a result. No wonder he's popped up game. on your radar then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, played years ago. And you uh, are wearing Sydney Swans colours right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've been stitched up already out here. Uh, but yeah. So much hype around this kid. Mm. I hope we get to see him in a trial game this season, whether or not they, they'll, they won't bring him into the top grade too quickly. Mm. There's too many smart minds there, particularly Gus Gould, uh, to warrant doing that. But I'd love to see him get a crack even against the Storm this Thursday at Belmore. We'll see what that squad looks like. But Even rap. just to see his mentality, yeah. just how he reacts. He doesn't necessarily have to play well. Just how does he react to that Storm jersey that's sitting across from him? Uh, you know, there's the, the age-old story now of Cleary debuting against the Storm, and it wasn't what he did in attack or any crazy, you know, bright light stuff. For people that don't know, he made 40 tackles and I think he only missed one of them. Yep. And like that, ironically, is almost the best debut you can have for a guy like Cleary. Because what it says is, is when the bright lights are on him, in the, you know, in big moments, he's not going to crumble to it. He's going to, especially the physical stuff. And I think, you know, he's proven that time again over the last few years. Yeah, if you are someone that gets out there to watch uh, SG Ball or whatever... Go and have a look at Canterbury. He'll be playing there. Mitch Woods, halfback. Yeah. So, one to watch. Uh, Sam Hughes. Uh, I think Gus has been talking him up a little bit as a middle forward. Mm. Um, they're obviously very short on middle forwards, Canterbury. Uh, but this time last year, Gus was talking up Jacob Preston. That didn't play out too badly. So <laughs> Yeah, it's an all right call. <laughs> I'll give him that Sam one. Sam Hughes, one to watch. Uh, um, another guy. This is, this is like almost the... He genuinely, I don't know if he would still qualify for Rookie of the Year, but he could be a schmokey for Rookie of the Year because how much talent he has. Skelton. Yep. Now, by from word that we've got from the dogs, still working on defensive you know, reads and that because he's from uni, he's only new. But when we talk about upside, holy shit, he is special. Um, even in his debut, or his first few games, I think he ran for 200 plus metres. He is a big, big boy. Uh, still eligible. He played two games. So, Schmokey for, for Rookie of the Year, if he can sort everything out, because it's going to be tough in the Bulldogs, but, mate, he's, he's a guy that can impact games regularly. He's, he looks that talented. Heap of upside. Uh, got a bit of, like, Greg Marshall about him, the way that he plays. Yeah. Yep. And so, it'd just be a matter of if he can – it might be next year that this happens because he's still learning the game. It could just all click for him, like Dom Young. Coming into this year, we're all sitting here going with Dom Young. You know, maybe it's going to take two or three years. And then he woke up one day and just said, I'm going to be one of the best wingers in the comp. 
hopefully Skelton is just, just similar to that. Just getting reps in, as I said, like ball in hand in attack, there's absolutely no issues on a report. And oh. even in the NRL when we watched him, he looked great with Beast. ball in hand. It'll just be, as you said, can be coming from rugby union, just transitioning into the defensive systems. And it's just reps, isn't it? Time and time again, a full pre-season there. You'll learn. Look, look how much Will Warbrick improved from round one to the last round. Like, yep. obviously got the match yep. winner. Even Guru, you just mentioned Greg Marsh. It took him bloody. Year. We waited for about six years. It felt we like had to change his name. Halfway yeah, through. yeah, because <laughs> yeah. because yeah. yeah. Lalesio was tarnished with uh, poor defensive reads, so he changed and he became a superstar. Yeah. So that's it, mate. Once he gets it sorted out, his defence. Oh, look out. Uh, two other young guys, Papaliti, who's a fullback there. Very, very handy. I think you might have done a live reaction to him a year or so ago as well. Yeah, probably. I could be wrong. Uh, but very strong, very quick. And another Is one... A crazy right foot step, yeah. if I recall correctly. Yes, yeah. very handy. Yeah, so he could play a few positions there. And a forward to watch, which they need, Damon Marshall, who they signed from Queensland last year. He came down, uh, played 13 for their Jersey flag side that won the comp last year. I actually haven't heard too much about him um, over the last year or so, but he's one that I've watched and have been very impressed with. This is a paid advertisement from BetterHelp, our show partner this week. It's the start of a new year and we all have our own resolutions. Some of us want to get fit, some want to learn a new skill, and some of us want to watch more footy. But there's a lot of us that probably just want to improve our mental health. If you're thinking of getting a hand with your mental game, get in touch with BetterHelp. Their services are entirely online and designed to work around you and your schedule. We all need a little guidance from time to time. As the largest online therapy provider in the world, BetterHelp can provide access to mental health professionals with a wide variety of expertise in mental health. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash bloke. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash bloke. So you get 10% off if you go to betterhelp.com slash bloke. Let's do Warriors. Um, I'm gonna have to get their names up because I'm literally writing an article as we speak. Uh, but they, there are some hectic forwards coming through the ranks. Now, they've always had talented forwards. But what excites me about the Warriors this year is coming into Andrew Webster's system. We're talking 18, 19. The oldest of them is 20. Uh, the Warriors came third this year in New South Wales Cup, so they're, they're doing the damn thing in New South Wales Cup. Uh, first one is, I think, Zion. How do you say his last name? Don't know how to pronounce oh. his last name. Apologies, but... You won't get him confused with the other Zions in this competition. Um, <laughs> very, very talented, an explosive forward. Um, also, like kind of nuggety, explosive, really short, short fast footwork. Yeah, uh, there's a guy that uh, right, has an Instagram page called the Short Ball. That if you are, if you're liking your junior rugby league, make sure you go check him out. I was talking to him about Zion last night. He rates him very, very highly. He's seen quite a bit of him. Could be an edge guy. Also, wouldn't be shocked if he ends up in the middle when AFB prop. leaves. I reckon yeah. he'd be a prop, Yeah. And he, he could be the one to fill that AFB role, potentially. It might be potentially a plan for the Warriors there. Um, there's some other guys. Apologies, guys. I've just Laban, them up. Jacob. Yeah, Jacob Laban. Yeah, he's Another one guy. that I like. To a picky we've already spoken about quite a bit, but where's this other guy? Dimitrik Sifakula. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Now, he did his ACL, I think, last year. He made his debut, but he is super aggressive, hole runner, you know, plays on the edge, but probably could eventually move in the middle if he had to at 13, but probably going to stick to an edge. Uh, if he can just, you know, train his ass off, be fully dedicated to it, I would, I'd be shocked if he can't make an impact in the NRL. If the coach can get two out of those three guys to kick on, you're looking at, you know, the Warriors that we know and love from back in the day. And also Leka Halasimi. Halasima, another back rower. Back, it, there's just like, the, all of these guys, crazy footwork. And I, th I think it was Lekker, I could be wrong, there's, there's a few of them, that they're f all, like all of them, but I think Lekker specifically, his footwork was insane for a back rower, but all of them have mm. it. Um, and then la other one there, Ali Leotow. Yeah. How'd I go? Anything close? Oh, I actually, Sorry. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I yeah, do apologize he's, for that. He's, he's a, a center, big center. He's a center and he's an absolute weapon, so. He's every chance of playing NRL this year and putting pressure on Barry, obviously not Roger, but whoever else is the other centre in that side, gun. We were actually there for his debut last year in Canberra. He got injured. Ah, oh, yeah. I'm not sure if you remember. We actually spoke to the family after. Yep. Very nice family. Travelled all the way down to Canberra, and I think he did his hammy 15 minutes in the middle. It's crazy. Bastard. Every single one of them, over 100 kilos. Yep. Like, we're talking about big boppers. Like, this guy's a centre. He's 188 centimetres, 102 kilos, 21 years old. Just big, big <sighs> boys. Um, 
And that's what the, you know, with the Warriors, it's the first year they're going to have woe to go, Josie Flegg, all of those sides as Warriors sides. So it's the first time they're ever going to have a full system from young teenage all the way to NRL. So if you can get these boys in the right environment, far out. Shout out to the North Sydney Bears SG Ball that took the flight to New Zealand yesterday and had about 60 point on, put on them by the Warriors. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. Tough flight. There you go. Flying all the way to New Zealand just get absolutely towed up. That uh, Ali Leotow last season, just going through his New South Wales Cup stats, a game against the Raiders laid on in the year 14 tackle bus from centre. 13 mm. games, nine tries last year. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, Warriors have always had good juniors, but like in this system, I'm just excited. Mm. Yeah, and in this, the biggest thing about this system for me is that these Warriors guys, they'd be looking forward to playing for the Warriors at the moment sure. just because of where they are, up the wires, all this sort of stuff. They're, they're, they're in a bit of a different space at the moment. Well, like, yeah, I'm, I'm writing an article now about the Warriors season preview and the feeling I get from the younger boys is they're, um, they're almost sick of being this young team with potential, like these young guys that come in and, yeah, we have a bit of potential, we're, but we're a bit inconsistent. The feeling I got when I watched... This, their first trial last year was a bunch of young boys who were like, nah, we're different. This generation's different. We're sick of always being touted as this next big thing. And then it works sometimes, it doesn't work other times. I'm, man, the Warriors for me with this kind of juniors coming through, holy, holy. Um, okay, let's do the Cowboys. North Queensland Cowboys. Um, now, as per usual with the Cowboys, Sort of hard to get too much out of the Cowboys because mm. they're all well, their juniors are up there. They sort of keep to themselves. But the one that I've always liked is Tom Duffy. He's a Blackhawks product, half back up there. Um, they've obviously brought back Jake Clifford over the last year or so. Uh, but I think Tom Duffy could be the guy up there yeah, okay. in the future. You've obviously got Tommy Dearden can play seven or six. I think Duffy's an out and out seven. So I know we all sort of like Tommy Dearden as a seven moving forward, but. I mean, the good thing with Dearden is you know he can play six. So If a seven jumps out of the ground, yeah. you're set there. So I think Tom Duffy's one. Uh, you got the two centres up there. Obviously, Labor, very impressive last year. You all saw what he can do. And I still like this kid from the Warriors, Valia, goes up there. I I wouldn't be surprised if he really breaks out at the North Queensland yeah. Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, you look what Sammy Valame did. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Killed it. Um, there's a, I, think it's, I think he's with the Cowboys. Shibasaki, his younger... Brother? Yep. Apparently ah. he's got some big, big raps on him as an edge back row, I'm pretty sure. Brother, right. Um, so, yeah, keep a look out for him. Obviously, he's going to be a couple of years away, yeah. uh, with especially with the back rows. I got holy shit. Um, yeah. Another winger up there, Robert Derby. Um, played 16 games in Q Cup last year, 13 tries, 66 tackle breaks, averaged 181 metres per Ooh. game. So, it's totally what you love to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Gold Coast Titans. Titans are in an interesting spot. Uh, they've obviously got like Keanu Keeney that we all know about, Thomas Weaver uh, that you've heard us talk about, halfback as well, um, in very good spots with those guys. Guy I want to point out, we spoke about him two weeks ago, Tony Francis, a winger. Uh, I think he's played 42 games in Q Cup. He scored 35 tries last year, 22 games, 21 tries, um, 19 line breaks, 76 tackle breaks. They've got a lot of outside backs, so it's hard to get into this side. Uh, they've got... Three fullbacks playing in the back line pretty much. But Tony Francis one to watch. Second role that I really like is this Jacob Arlick. Hasn't played a heap yeah. of first grade yet, but every time I see him, there's just something about him. Killed it in the internationals. Killed yeah. it in the internationals. I think he might be playing in the All-Stars on Friday night. Okay. So one to keep an eye on there. <laughs> also got Hass's younger brother, I'm pretty sure. Payne Hass's Close. younger brother. Yeah. Uh, the thing with the, the Titans is they're already so young that like they're almost the CBAs now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. they're a young, youngish squad. Whereas you look at some of these other ones that have older players kind of coming through. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that the the one for me that I'm interested to see what he decides to do because it's the seven jersey for the Titans is almost like a curse because <laughs> they've had some of the best sevens you could ever imagine come through. The Australian schoolboys, all that kind of stuff. Um, the guy that made his debut last year, I forget his name now. Weaver is it? No, um, yeah, Tommy Weaver. Tommy Weaver. Yep. Huge kicking game, huge kicking game. But with Tanner Boyd looking like that, you know, they're really keen on him being seven. I wonder whether he stays or he goes. Yeah, I'm not sure what Tommy Weaver is going to do, but I agree. Very yeah. talented. Um, yeah. Obviously, with Toby Sexton leaving last year, that frees up, makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. But it's still, do they maybe pair tough. him and Tanner Boyd? Uh, like 
six, seven, maybe. Tanner's big enough to play. Oh, six. I think Tanner could play six well yeah. and truly, but it's like, what do you get? Like, it's just so hard at the moment because you've got Kieran Four in there. You can't not play Foz, so yeah. Oh, I mean, more like the 2025. And even like Brimson's not going to want to play centre his whole career, I can't imagine. So if they, it's clear they've gone in the direction of Jaden Campbell at fullback. So Brimo, surely that leaves him going back to 5 8 post yeah, Foz. So yeah, I'm true. very confident there's one or two guys in this squad they are going to go elsewhere and kill it, and people are going to go, well, why did the Titans let him go? And it's like, well, yeah. fuck, they're in a tough spot. Yeah. Whoop. All good. You're all good. Yeah, still up. <laughs> Not going to sue me, oh, HNS. Uh, time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the Tigers. Have we already spoken about the Tigers? No, we have not. Not yet. Tigers. Me, so want to take us away? I so, yeah, I do actually, and uh, I would hope that a few of these end up in the uh, the class of 24 as well. We'll Wait and yeah, see. At the end of the show. Keep listening, guys. We've still got to announce our class of 24 CBAs. All right. Uh, now I listened to a, a brilliant uh, show on the uh, Tigers channels over the weekend. Behind the Raw. Now this one. Um, Certainly more my cup of tea uh, than Ask the Boss, which was the last offering that we had um, at the Tigers. This is great insight, though, into some of the, the potential CBAs in the Tigers squad coming through. So the first one is Lockie Galvin, and I think Guru will probably have some, some more on this bloke as well, but can play six, can play 13, um, knows how to win as well. He went through in his juniors. He played for uh, a team or out in, it might be in East Parramatta. They won three years in a row, didn't lose a game, undefeated last year in Harold Matz as well. So he's a winner. We need more winners at the Tigers. Yep. So I like what I see there. He actually had a year with the Eels as well. They cut him for being too small. Oh. He's now 193 centimetres, 91 kegs as a number six. So, you know, for once, one of them's gone our way, which is yep. good. Um, well, you he, did also steal Stefano from them. Just, just. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, anyway, uh, he, also, <laughs> he also won the 1.2 kilometre time trial in the pre-season. So he's training the house down as okay, well. Okay, the house is down. The yeah. house has been trained down. Benji mentioned that he could play in round two, which is our first game of the season. So uh, there's a lot to like there about Lockie Galvin. Now, I don't know if he play, probably will play in round two, but um, if we have a bit of a poor start to the year or whatever, maybe we'll get a crack there somewhere. I don't know if you've got any more info on him, Guru. No, you've, you've done really well there. He actually, when he played Harold Mutz a couple of years ago, he played in the back row. It's a oh, tough wow. two, which we love to see. Yep. Um, in a squad that features Bud Sullivan, Latufino, Aiden Caesar, for Benji to be talking about Galvin with Benji Marshall with uh, Jerome Luai arriving, I, I don't know what to read into it. I don't know yeah. if he's trying to stick a rocket up others. I like is he is he trying to make him his man? Like he's a young guy. It's it's a it's a blank canvas. Or is he trying to get Fainu to react of like, hey, hang on a sec, hang on a sec, or and Bud Sullivan as well. Yeah. Um, you can play yeah. centre as well. Like t- take your pick yeah, where, where yeah. you want to slot him in. If if the halves do kill it, one of their thousand options, you put him in centre. Yeah. Anyone else? Tigers. Yep. Uh, Talon De Silva, eighteen years yeah. old, hooker. Um, he played. He actually played one of the was an SG trial. Yeah, he played first grade last year and yep. then went back and played SG ball last week. Yep. You don't see that very often. Again, I, I, I'm I'm getting Wayne Bennett vibes from Benji. There's a lot of these decisions Same. that do like. <laughs> 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 that do reflect kind of how Wayne Bennett almost used to play mind games with some of his juniors to see how they'd react. Because there's no way he should be playing SG ball with how good he is. But yeah. maybe he wants to see how he reacts. Yeah. And of course, Benji, you know, he was he played under Wayne at two clubs, two or three clubs. So yep. I followed him around a little bit. Uh, part of that Harold Matt side that didn't lose a game as well yep. in 2022. A few little things that are still a little bit green. He wore Crocs in his interview on Behind the Raw. <laughs> A um, few little things to work on there, but very exciting prospects. And I think we've seen a lot more talent to Silver this year. Okay. Jordan Miller, uh, another middle forward to keep an eye on. And, mate, there's a guy playing in their uh, SG ball side at the moment, Navran Willett, six foot seven. Holy shit. Big bit of gear. So uh, keep an eye on him. I think he's playing fullback for them. Okay. Uh, we also have another set of brothers, just really quickly as well. Uh, Luke uh, Lualili and uh, Kit Lualili. Okay. Uh, Kit, I believe, a forward. Luke, apparently, a very damaging fullback and winger as well. Uh, Going to play SG ball this year. A few years away. Yep. But exciting. Kit, my pick of the lower Lees. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, time for the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> <laughs> for the Newcastle Knights. Uh, Newcastle Knights, couple CBAs. Yeah, the Newcastle room. Knights are very interesting, Kempi. Uh, they have got a fullback in every single grade right now that in 10 years' time could all be stars. Mm. They are stacked. You've obviously got KP. Uh, below him, you've got David Armstrong, who's in the top 30. Bit of, bit of pressure on KP's spot this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
There's genuine like three potential superstars underneath him though. Uh, David Armstrong, who played in the last Cup last year, very impressive. Below him, Fletcher Sharp, who to me is just Pappenhausen 2.0, very talented. And then the one that's Sharp. just come into. Um, <laughs> Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's just coming to SG Ball this year who eyeball test could potentially be the best of the three is Connor Voltano. Apologies if I've got that wrong, but he is like a combo of KP and Turbo. The way that he moves. Whoa. He's worth Holy. a – have a look at his highlights package. Worth watching him. Big body like Turbo, mm. but the way that he moves a lot like KP. Is so. he wearing Yes, she does actually. I think, oh, yeah. I think, so, I think I've seen the highlights. Yeah, very, very talented. Um, those fullbacks. There's a second role that I really like. Tom Cart. He's a Maitland boy. But he can. <laughs> <laughs> Maitland boy. Tom Cart. Uh, he captained their 2022 Jersey flag side that lost the grand final a couple of years ago. A second rower. Um, in that grand final, I think they scored three tries. He. Uh, Scored the first one, set up the next one, ran the decoy for the last one. Also a goal-kicking second row at Kempe, which I absolutely love. Craig Fitzgibbon Ooh. vibes. Oh. Ooh. The great Fitzy. The great <laughs> Fitzy. Hey, Timmy, you got anything, mate, from Newey? Uh, tall Paul Bryan. Came oh. back from an ACL last oh. year. He had, had 12 months. What's his name? Tall Paul Bryan. Tall Paul yeah. Bryan. How do you spell that? Tall, T-A-L-L. <laughs> yeah. Paul, P-A-U-L. Brian, B R Y. Is Paul his middle name or is it Tall? No, his name's just Paul Brian. But we're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> tall, tall Paul's the, uh, an iconic Brisbane Heat big bash cricketer, as you know all about. And uh, <laughs> I, th- I, I thought uh, the NRL needed a bit of a flavour of Tall Paul. So, <laughs> Tall Paul there's Brian. Like, there's like nearly 100,000 people listening going, Tall Paul, <laughs> not understanding the joke. <laughs> Oh, no. It does what it says on the tin, 190 centimetres, I can see here. Hey, so tall Paul. Pretty tall. Uh, Queensland under-19s prop, SG Ball Player of the Year for the Knights, 2022. Signed yeah. on until 2025, so looks all right. Bright prospects. And the other one, Will Price, boys. The son mm. of the great Leon Price. English star. I can't wait to see him play, just because yeah. he's been terrific over in the Super League for a couple of years now. Still quite young. A really can play a number of different positions, but potentially a five eight. And you look at these guys. Jackson Hastings is the one who's locked in as number seven for the Knights, and then there's Gamble v Cogger. And you know, Gamble's a obviously a ball running sort of five eight. Cogger more of a halfback organizer. But Will Price, he's the, the bit of the wild card who comes in. Plenty of speed about him. Plenty of ball playing ability. A few defensive question marks. But in terms of players complementing each other. Hastings and Price, if he hits the ground yep. running. Did I hear wrong that he can play wing? Yeah. Yep. So he can play wing? Yep. Yeah, wow. So obviously he can play fullback then too. Anywhere. Yeah, wow. Wow, that's um, fair, fair. Uh, now, and I mean, another guy that I can't wait to see, Kai Pierce paul Yeah, very excited about Kai Pierce paul Rumours out of Newcastle are that he might be playing left edge now. Well, like, not even rumours. We're hearing strong word that he's had a... Friggin' good preseason. I think he's playing left edge. So yeah. Yeah. So which is crazy to think Tyson Brazil initially was whispered to get across there. Yeah. But if you're putting him if you're if he's having such a good preseason that we're getting word that he may he at least get the first crack at that edge on your strong edge that essentially is your make or break edge. That must say something about him. He's also, like, first time in the NRL, he's coming back from injury as well. He's carried a toe injury throughout the preseason. So I think the Newcastle Knights will give him a bit of time there. So huge watch this year, Paul, Pierce Paul. Really, like, almost uh, could hit the – could hit the, like, put it this way. There's some guys that could come over and they could hit the ground running, but they'll still just be a good, solid NRL player. His physical attributes, if he does hit the ground running, could be, oh, he's actually – one of the most impactful back rolls in the comp because he's not just a normal, you know, 185 centimetre, 98 kilos. Like he's a rangy, rangy back row. Now, there's also a world where he comes in and it takes him 12 months mm. to get used to the pace, to get used to the physicality, um, to just get used of, of the reads of the game. That also could happen. So he's almost like one of the biggest swing players in the comp. And if you were to come to the NRL as a second rower and you were asked, where do you want to play? <laughs> Newcastle left edge. Holy. Doesn't get much better than that. Uh, two other young back rolls to watch, Clay Webb and Miles Martin, who they got from Parramatta. Two kids and I like. Lucas as well. Dylan Lucas, Dylan Lucas. yes. And a good position, jeez. Yeah. Like, the Knights haven't been in this position in so long. Where you're sitting there going, all of these different positions are up for grabs and also they've got a bunch of players that can play that. Uh, Dylan Lucas is a smoky for me. I know he wouldn't – would he be a CBA? Kind of. 
really interesting him. Like he came through as a winger, yeah. playing in the Newcastle. Comp and then he debuted at ago. centre, I think. Yeah, and then he moved into the back row, and he was, you know, it's a small sample size, five or six games. But my God, he played tough. In Unbelievably those five or six games. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think he's still CBA territory because six games last season. And if you asked most rugby league fans who they were, they'd be like, who's Dylan Lucas? So yeah. I think that, that counts. Um, anyone from the Knights? Anyone? No. Very okay. comprehensive. Well okay. covered. Well, well done, Guru. Yep. Thank you. Uh, that's why you're here, mate. Yeah. That's why you're on the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Open to bigger bucks. Anyway. <laughs> 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 um, Storm. Melbourne Storm. Uh Start with my boy, Far Longo. Uh, you all got to see him at the back end of last season. Blew it away, played internationals, did really well there. Obviously sitting behind Ryan Pappenhausen. I see people say that he might play centre this year. I think he's too small to play centre. I think it's either wing or fullback, but I think fullback is his spot. I can't see him getting a spot over Will Broadbrick or Coates. Nor can I, so I think he has to bide his time. 14 maybe? Yeah, Craig Bellamy's no stranger to running with, even when he used to run with two hookers, he used to pick a winger on the bench sometimes yeah. as well. So I think you'll see him at some point. I think when he does get in, very bubbly personality. Mm. I think he'll become a cult hero yeah. very, very quickly. Tell you what, that highlight reel is going to be absolutely insane when he plays in a row. It's going to be wild. Like yeah. In his first game, he's got a better highlight reel than a lot of players have their freaking old careers. Yeah, and he moves like, you know, you see the old like Fiji, like nines teams, the yeah. way that they st- He's very much so like that. Like yeah. he'll be very, very popular very mm. quickly. Um, obviously, I mean, we've saying it for a few years now, but How Earth is, you know, definitely a CBA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on there, but he's got the ability. Mm. Um, I just, I really hope we're not talking about him on this show next year. Mm. He's my biggest. Playing All Stars, uh, which is exciting. Good to see. Oh, is he? Because yeah. Indigenous or Maldi? Maldi. Maldi, yep. yeah. yeah. Um, very exciting. Really, really keen to see him in the All Stars game this weekend, yep. uh, which you can watch on KO. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the right hand? No, everything's good. <laughs> Eight hours see. left. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, once again, another one of these guys. Is he a CBA? Is he not? Sean Bloor, still in my category nah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> not a CBA. Let him through the keeper. <laughs> Just a whole however. Is he still qualified? <laughs> <laughs> I'll certainly be keep my eye on him. <laughs> Last guy, Kempi's our man, Joe Chan. Our man, Joe Chan. It's a good rhyme there for you, Guru. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see. Because he, didn't he go away and play Super League for a little bit or something? Yeah, went over to Ooh. Catalans, I want to say. Uh, I like him. I think he could have a little breakout this year. Yep. Um, and uh, who else? Uh, fuck, forgetting his name now. The seven coming Hezzet. through. Hezit. Really interesting to see his development because you're never probably going to take that jersey off Hughes. But when he has come in... He's been, he definitely hasn't been bad when he's come in. He's been solid. Huge raps on him, especially coming out of school. Um, and also, I think in the under 19s, New South Wales, Queensland, he's had like four or five tries. He killed it for years South ago. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, going to be interesting to see what he decides to do with his next few years because I'm assuming he's not going to want to sit in reserve grade. Yeah, big 24 months coming up for him yeah. as far as decisions to be made and whatnot. He's like last year with all the hype coming in, and, and I thought he held his own more than enough yeah. when he got cracks last year. I'd rate the bloke. And again, you don't want to put anyone down to just stats. His Q Cup stats were a little bit interesting last year, though. Nine games, scored one try, 71% conversion kicking. He had one try and three tries just in nine games. 81% tackle efficiency. You need to assess how they actually were. Did win seven, lose two, which is winning, losing big stat, particularly for halfbacks. Yeah. But not setting the world alight, statistically speaking. Doesn't mean he hasn't got around the park and done a great job, but yeah. just... Maybe not hit the ground running the way we sort of hoped he would come out of that origin game. I think he's a good player, but I think that 19s game, I think it lifted the expectation mm. a little bit too high sure, for him. And he might yep. take a few years to maybe I think get so. to that. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, storm done. Uh, Dragons. Uh, the Dragons, they really need some guys to jump out of the ground this year, obviously. The Couchman boys, very impressive. There's a centre there, Tamale, that I like. He's in there, it's top 30. I was sort of hoping that Zach Lomax would move to fullback and he might actually get a sniff, but it sounds like Jack Bird's going to play centre. Uh, but he's one to watch. Their SG ball this year, it's not, we're only two rounds in. It looks like they are flying at the moment. Might not be really. the team to beat. So I don't know too many of those players, but hopefully there's guys coming through there. Shows you kind of where the club is at the moment. 
because Illawarra notoriously good juniors, like yeah. you know, a, a hotbed of good juniors, and the fact that look in their defence, in their defence, Amon Sullivan Sloan. They were their CBAs, so you know maybe we're just missing. There's like a little gap between the next batch that's come through, um, but it, it still is a little bit concerning that it's not jumping out at the moment just yeah. yet. Talking to some um, officials from Manly the other day, they had a trial against the Dragons, mm. and uh, as Flano came out and said as well, you mentioned Illawarra Stock, the captain of from Illawarra two years ago, Dylan Egan on mm. the edge. Looks like he's going to snare a spot in that uh, 17 for the Dragons. Yeah, because Flano's been talking him up, hasn't he? Talked him up big time, and the Manly guys we spoke to said he was very impressive in oh, that really? trial as well. Okay, so, so CBA? Yeah, well, I actually hadn't seen too much of him before, but sounds like he's flying, so... Okay, that's positive. That's a great That's great news, for, especially Dragons needing forwards. Yep. Um, from Manly as well, Viliami Fafita, who's a second row forward who can play in the middle. This jersey's up for grabs there. He could be the one to jump out of the ground too. And also, you know... They're looking for someone with a bit of je ne sais quoi. Uh, yep. I think they said that in the scouts meeting, actually. Yep. We're looking for je ne sais quoi. Mm-hmm. And then Manly said, we've got a guy, the feeder. Um, I think it's his middle name. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, exciting that they've got forwards that have a bit of punch about them, have a bit of you know footwork. Because at the moment they've got some good forwards, but they're, they're battlers. Like They get through a bunch of work, which is what you need in a footy team, but you need to sprinkle in a bit of... Jenna <laughs> uh, Who else we got? Eels? Yeah, Para. Uh, the kid that I like there is Blaze Talangi, who's uh, come through the junior grades, played just about every position in the back line. Mm. Um, I think you will actually see him at some point this year in first grade. Uh, Rumours that he could play fullback, maybe move Gutho around. I know Parramatta have been talking for way too long about moving Gutho. Out of fullback. Oh, please don't Whatever. give me a freaking stroke. Reason, that is. Uh, but yeah, Blaze telling you one to watch. Play a comp for him. I'd say he's very similar and looks a bit like Dill Brown. That's a good thing because he's hot. He is hot. Um, we need a Blaze in the NRL too. Oh, Blaze is a great name. Yep. yep. It's Blazer. It's Leezer. <laughs> it's Teaser. <laughs> Dodgeball, one of the great movies. Great film. Was that is that the quote though? Is it Blazer, Slazer and Taser? Anyway, it's all names, it's all names that are similar. Formidable dodgeball team. That one. It was. <laughs> 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 um, I didn't. I because I, we, you know, we ran short uh, on the season preview. Um, <laughs> I didn't express enough. I'm actually going to put. It's not really a smoky chat, but I reckon Dylan, Dylan Brown wins Dally M five eighth year. I reckon he is in for such a massive year, and I'm such a fan of him. Like his footy ability. I don't even think we've gotten close to his his potential. Like I really believe that we are. We've only seen 80 to 85%. I think he's in for such a big year for the club. And it's going to take him having a Dally M-ish type year for them to for push for that. For. Yeah, yeah, I think Dill's in for a big season. Hard though. Dally M medal's hard when you're in a team like that with Guffer, Mitch Moses still in. Uh, he's 5'8 of the year. 5'8 of the year, not Dally M medal. Oh, but I, like what I did we... say, Dally M year. So both years. Oh, right, right. right. Okay, yeah. gotcha. But yeah, I was yeah, saying 5'8 yeah, yeah. Dally yeah. M. Yeah, I think that's a good shout. Um, yeah. But you know what? He has the talent to be Dalian of the Year. That's how good he is as a player. But you're right. In that team, very hard to win. Well, Especially the way Gutho and Moses play. They're such like they're so dominant. Yep. They like win the... My, my, my head immediately went to Dalian medal when you said that. And I was kind of like, it didn't shock me, but like obviously 5'8 of the year. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's got that much potential. I, th- I think he... I, if I had to pick a Dalian 5'8 of the year right now, I think he wins it. Yeah. It's a good shout. Uh, a lot of chat about the Parramatta hookers heading into this year. Keep an eye on uh, Brad Arthur's son, Matt Arthur, mm. coming through. Uh, I think the SG Ball won last year. He was the hooker in that side. Matt Arthur, is that related to Brad? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I thought about not doing it, and then I was just like, I just got to do it. And I'm, I did it. I'm glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> you missed 100% of the shots you don't take. Don't you? <laughs> Um, also, back rower, Charlie Guyman that I like. And shout out to uh, Richard Penasini, who did his... I think he did an ACL a ACL, few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, very Poor talented fella. guy for the future as well. Um, it sucks they're losing that young half, but I understand why they're using, losing him. Like, what are you yeah. going to do? You're He's, never going to get that jersey. And and I, I actually think Eels deserve a bit of credit there for allowing him. Would have been very easy for them. Because, like, if they lose Mitch, who plays seven for him? I see, yeah. And like, so he's solid, but this well, young guy's. Yeah. They've also got that Talangi who, the other thing with Talangi, like can play centre and has played centre recently. So they're looking for outside backs. Mm. 
who knows? Maybe he's the guy. Yeah. But but I think the Eels deserve a a rap for they could have been selfish and kept the guy, kept him, and you know all that kind of stuff. And they're gonna, I guess, allow him to to bounce. Um, maybe he wasn't signed though, so maybe he just got bigger offer. But they could have made it hard for him. Could have made it hard for him. Um, anyone else at the Eels? No, I think that's it. Uh, Manly, last one. No, we, we did Manly. Oh, to a degree, we did Manly. Well, Humphreys, obviously. Is, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um is someone that is is screaming his name. Uh, mm-hmm. In regards to, I'm still pretty high on um, Chi Kom Tong. Uh, <coughs> Chi Kom Tong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still high on him. Like, although Humphreys, it looks like might have the jump on him, I still think he's got a lot to offer. I agree. Yeah, I like him. Uh, who else for you guys in there? Is Ben Trevojevic still a CBA? Mm. Maybe. I mean, if his name wasn't Trevojevic, he would be. If he wasn't Trevojevic, he'd be, uh, still be eligible, but we know him too much because of the name. Yeah, okay. Have you got the Kazma report? Uh, no, I think you, you, you've, you've covered most of them there. She was very uh, excited about Trevojevic yesterday after yeah. the hat-trick. So there was, there was no new names really. Came. I know I asked her a few weeks ago, her CBA guy, and she spat back out Clayton Fualalo, who I haven't seen much of, but a centre winger. That name does ring a bell. That name does ring a bell. Um, yeah, well, Manly. We already kind of spoke about Manly. Spoke about Dolphins, spoke about Broncos. Uh, okay, now it is time. Oh, I've got one CBA for you. Yep. Uh, from the world of the enhanced games. So it's not, not necessarily <laughs> from the NRL. Yep. But we saw the news last week. James Magnuson um, being offered $1.5 million mm. by Dr. Aaron D'Souza. If he can come back and break the world record. Now, my mail is that, uh, you remember Eric the Eel? <laughs> Eric the Eel Yeah uh, Represented Equatorial Guinea At Sydney 2000 Now Aaron D'Souza reportedly mm. uh, Looking to raise 1.5 uh. Central African francs If uh, Eric Muzambati Can come out of retirement And break the Equatorial Guinea record So watch this space okay, He's Eric 45 Neal. years old now Maybe a little bit Past his best But um, I mean we're all Looking forward to the Enhanced games uh, So he's my CBA Eric the Eel Muzambani Watch his face. Shout out. Yeah. If you watch, oh, he does watch the podcast, so yep. he'll, he'll be stoked with that. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for the CBA draft of 2024, the class of 2024. Now, Guru, we're going to get you to flip the coin. Whoever wins, I'm going to go apple side up. Whoever wins gets to have the first pick of the draft. So Guru is going to flip the coin. Best of I'm, luck, mate. Best of luck, mate. <laughs> Live TV, how good. Uh, Apple side up. <laughs> there Take we go. Away. Yes. First pick. First pick. Now, I'm going to shock the audience. Shock and awe. I am going to trade my first and second pick. Well, I'm going to ask you, will you take my first and second pick of next year? <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to trade your pick? <laughs> I'm trading my first and second pick of next year. Sorry, of this year mm. for next year to get the first pick of next year. Do you accept that trade deal? Yeah, I think I understand why you're doing that as well. You might have your eyes on a hooker from Brisbane. A couple um, of players from Brisbane. I, oh, a couple of players from Brisbane, huh? Yeah, I'm going to take it. Okay. I'll take the first two picks this year. You take this, okay, first two picks. All right, so lock it in. Next year, I have the first pick regardless of coin flip, no matter what. Just traded away my first two picks this year. All right. Now, I guess walk us through who is the great Gurino. First pick, class of 2024, could be anything. My first pick for the 2024 class could be anything. I'm going to go for Wong from the Sydney Well, um, As I said earlier, you guys got to see a little bit of him at the end of last season, which I don't love, but uh, he showed you how good he is. I've been talking about him for years now, and I think he could be one of the best forwards in rugby league very, very quickly. like that he's at the Roosters. Very, very happy with Wong as the first pick. That stings me. That stings me. And and guys, the way this works is obviously we're going to compare the picks at the end of the year to see who did better. That stings me because I had – he was there or thereabouts for me. Now, obviously, I've traded away my second pick. Now, you know I'm a spiteful guy. Oh, <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> um, don't you dare, guru. So Have a heart. No heart. Heartless. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to really stick it up here. here. I'm going to move my picks around, and I'm going to take Mariner from the Brisbane Broncos. Oh, caught that. That's uncouth. <laughs> That's super uncouth and disrespectful. 
there, there's no reason. There's plenty of other players that are on the same trajectory at other clubs, and you've just gone out and taken my boy, Mariner. Very happy to have him in my side. Uh, yeah, we saw him in the trial on the weekend. Very impressive, as always. Big future in the game. Mariner's my second pick. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's, that's, that's spite in that, don't you reckon, boys? It's a little a bit of spite. spite in that. Yeah, a little bit. There's heaps yeah. of that. You got, your, you got your team, the Roosters, at number one. <laughs> along, and then you steal my team's guy. Unbelievable. All right, well, I'm pick three. Now, my pick... Uh, this guy for me, he is already you know there or thereabouts. He's so exciting. He can play multiple positions. I think that as he grows into bo- his body, he's going to get even better. My number one pick, because it potentially was taken, is Munro. That's right. Munro is my first pick for class of twenty four. He is electric. He's got just that Jenna Saint Croix, and that was the main priority in my picks. Is a Jenna Saint Croix rating, which is ten out of ten for Munro. Uh, um, the Jazz Q scale. The jazz Q scale. That's absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's my first pick, Root. Who, who is your third pick? My third pick. I'm going to dip back into the Redfin bunch. Talis Duncan. Cam Murray 2.0. Took him from the Roosters a couple of years ago, the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Huge future in our game. Talis Duncan, very confident pick. What is uh, JSQ like? <laughs> High. <laughs> Interesting. Now, I can't believe you fell for this trap. <laughs> oh. I can't believe you fell for this trap. Because a lot of people, this, this guy is actually could have been my number one. He mm. could have been my number one. And it is insane that Rue didn't take him. Fa'alongo is my number two oh. pick. Come on, Gary. I can't believe he fell for that. So I got Munro and Fa'alongo. That is unbelievable, Ruru. Sloppy. I thought Ruru was going to lock him in as number one. <laughs> That's just sloppy and lazy. <laughs> 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 All right, so how many are you at right now? We're at five? Five. We've got one more. To, well, we've got two more to come, but one more from us. Yep. My last pick is going to be my man that I've been talking about for a few years, Ido from the Cronulla Sharks. Wow. Okay, okay. Moves like Val, got superstar written all over him. Any concern that he can't get a crack in the first grade side this year? Uh, this year, yes, just because where the Cronulla Sharks are at, but I am very confident heading into the future, he'll pay dividends. Okay. So in a year's time when we look back at the class of 2024, I think your will be one to keep an eye on. Now that's three each. Well, that's our, our six done, Kempi. We've now got a wild card pick. Now the boys... Have a little yarn. Yep. Who's your wild card? Because you could win the whole lot. If he kills yeah. it the most out of anyone, yeah, you could right win the whole eh? lot. Okay. Well, so I would, I would assume we're all probably thinking Moose and Barney first. <laughs> is, is it quick? No? No. Lockie Galvin. Interviewed very well on Behind the Raw. Spoke about him. Going to pull rank on Hammy here because he's just going to go and rattle off six Tigers juniors. So haven't run this by Matty either, but... Like we spoke a little bit about Kai Pierce, Paul. Ooh, you're risking it for the biscuit. Well, KPP. the English have always been good to the Raiders in recent years. Oh, so oh, I thought we could oh. throw a bit of faith behind them. It all comes back to the Raiders. Big, always does, mate. Big, <laughs> big raps on him. But, mate, a star over there, left edge for the Knights this season, who will be running off Caelan Ponga. Possibly the best position in the NRL is left edge back row outside KP on his strong side. What do you reckon, Amy? What's his JSQ, just before you lock him in? <laughs> 9.7. Wow. Pretty hard to ignore him then, isn't it? (laughs) So you're going Kai Pierce Paul? Yeah. Locked in. So the class of twenty seven a class of twenty four guru, can you read out the class of twenty four of could be anything's? Uh, now we'll explain some of the guys that missed out in a second, but please read out the class of twenty four could be anything's. From the Sydney Roosters, Sia Wong. From the Brisbane Broncos, Dean Mariner. From the Melbourne Storm, Swat Falongo. Talis Duncan from the South Sydney Rabbitohs, Ty Munro from the South Sydney Rabbitohs, <laughs> Kale Ito from the Cronulla Sharks, and Timmy's wild card, Kai Pierce Paul. Timmy notorious for taking dollar ten favourites. I like that he's rolled the <laughs> dice here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's very un Timmy like. Very un Timmy. He was, he was going to say Reese Walsh. <laughs> 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 now, look, I'm not going to get into my tactics, but there are a few guys that it was very close to getting them in. One by the name of Blake Moser. Mm. I am not stoked you've got two picks next year because I think that 2025 will be the year of Blake Moser. Uh, so I think you've got a very, very good one there. I think some of these Canberra Raiders boys were very close to getting selected. Uh, it's just the situation the Raiders find themselves in mm. that has me a little bit worried about those guys to start their careers. But 
those boys could be the big misses out yeah. of this. And I'm, I'm nervous with Moser because if he comes out and kills it this year, then obviously he's not a CBA next year and I've missed him in the class of 24. Mm. But I'm going to risk it. I'm going to time my run perfectly. Another bloke, Willison, mm. very close. So, so close. Um, I just want to see him get through a full year of first grade. Uh, I know that's, that sounds bizarre because he's just a rookie, but just injuries-wise and that, not that he's super injury-prone, but just want to see him play a full year. But I'd be, I would not be shocked if he comes out and absolutely kills it this year. Um, I think Chevy Chevy Stewart yep. is another the mm-hmm. guy that you guys were talking about. That there's a chance he comes out and kills it, but with that Raiders side, you just don't know how it's going to go this year. So it's going to be hard mm. if, if they're struggling for a fullback to to do his thing. Um, there's a few other guys at the Broncos that I've kind of set myself up for for the, the first draft pick next year. But you know, I'll be patient. I'll be patient as I am. I always stay patient. Uh, you, you need to hope. That uh, Moser plays enough games this year to put him out of CBA class and Kempy can't pick him up. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, any other boys that were lucky? Uh, oh, the, oh, there's a lot of boys that are unlucky to miss out. Any guys, you boys? Well, I've been, I've been going on about Lockie Galvin uh, all episode. I, I reckon he, you know, maybe next year is the year that he, he gets a bit more of a crack um, than this year. But I reckon he's a little bit unlucky from the Tigers' perspective. But uh, aside from that, I can, I can live with the selections. You can live. Uh, yeah. Another few boys, those forwards that we mentioned from the Warriors, yep. literally any one of them could absolutely explode this year. Huge potential to leave egg all over our face. Yes. Yeah. And I actually hope they do. It'd be great to see one or two of them yeah. explode. I was so close to like, just just put one in, but I, I was just, it's so hard. And also we did seven this year. We're actually only supposed to do five. Mm. So we're going to try and get it down to five, but that is your class of 24 CBAs. Uh, look, we've got, I would consider like the guys like Moser, Chevy, you know, all those boys, they're like in the rookie class of CBA. They're not in the, the first grade CBA mm-hmm. side yet. Um, but all the other boys we mentioned on this episode would not be shocked if they come out and absolutely kill it. I mean, when you look at the draft in the super uh, in the NFL, um, how often does like pick 10, pick 12 come out and dominate? Yeah, all the time. All the time. So, um, yeah. Like 99 TV, wasn't he as well? The best ever. He turns up for his mates, family, good times. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. That was a uh, – really enjoyed that. The CBA first ever episode. Uh, now let's get into any uh, some games this weekend. We've got the Roosters versus Seagulls. We've got the Eels versus Raiders. We've got the Dogs versus Storm. Knights versus Sharkies. Rabbitohs versus Dragons. Warriors versus Tigers. Uh, Cowboys, Broncos. Dolphins, Titans. All – Exclusively on KO. Uh, just trying to put this up here. Yeah, it all starts this weekend with the All Stars game on Friday. Uh, play eight games of trials in the first round of the preseason trials. If you want to get in early and watch your team in the first trial, KO is the place to watch all of the trial matches. Uh, let's talk about the All Star game, boys. How excited are you for the All Star game? I cannot wait. Yeah, it's always a highlight on the calendar, Friday night. Uh, super excited to see it. Obviously, this game means a lot to uh, all these players running out there. Plenty of opportunities for young guys in this game too. This is um, where Hopgood did his best work last year. Yes, yeah, this is where Hopgood sort of emerged. Um, can you see Nico Hines go around again, especially now that Cody Walker's been ruled out. Mm. Nico Hines' team. Latrell obviously playing in this game too. So, so much talent getting out there. Hamiso as well. We've got to mention him in that sort of category now. Oh, yeah. Far out. Look at like I just looking at this roster. I know some guys had to pull out, but far out there's some good players here. Like it, I feel like each year it's just getting better and better. Like, as in we had we had the big stars playing in yesteryear, but this is like from fullback into the front row, you've got top tier players. Yeah, yeah. Willison getting a, another run for you. Trey Mooney gets a start. Ooh, I like it's exciting. That. I like that. Uh, Puru as well from the Canberra Raiders, mm-hmm. who I think's got a big future as well. Not to be confused with. Puru from the Sharkies. Is his brother? Pretty sure. I think they might even be twin brothers, potentially. Really? Yeah. Definitely but he, brothers. But he's a forward, though, isn't he? Yeah. One's a forward, one's. Well, sorry. Sharkies, one's a halfback. This one's sort of a 13. Okay. Middle forward. Both okay. came from Penrith. Okay. Um, I'm in, really interested in Howarth. I'm really interested to see how he goes. Because, like, if he hits the ground running, geez, Storm fans, start cheering. Start yeah. cheering. Because that rounds out your forward pack crazy. Especially if him and Bloor play well this year. Holy. I'll eat Leo Thompson. Really interested to see how he goes. Um, and Xavier Wilson, backing up for the Maldi All-Stars. Stop it. Can't wait to see the big fella go around. Nikita, keen as. Um, Hughes is a big watch for me. 
Because how he plays this season will really dictate, you know, are Storm a genuine premiership threat this year? Like, they need him to have a big year. Uh, who else is standing out for you, boys? I think you already mentioned his name, but Trey Mooney as well. I'm just keen to see him get another opportunity to yeah. show what he can do because there is so much potential there. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who else? Yeah, Stags. Uh, another, uh, Shaq Mitchell. Really, really interested to see how he goes because if he kills it, then Rabbitohs go from ooh, a little bit lighter in the front row to, oh, they are stacked in the front row. I didn't notice his name until now in the Indigenous All-Stars side, but Kyle Labor, this will be another rep game mm-hmm. where everyone sits back and goes, fuck, Kyle Labor can play. Someone should sign him. Yep. Cue that for next Monday. Yep, yep. Uh, anyone else? Timmy? I love JJ for feeder. Yeah. And he's going to... Like, shocked he can't get a crack. I, me too, but yeah. so like... Because Brimson's gone to centre this year, like he probably doesn't start for the Titans. He's such a good footballer. So you'd have Cam Pereira on one edge and then uh, Phil Sammy on the other edge? Yep. Geez, if I'm a club, I'm knocking on for Peter's yeah. door. And Brian Kelly and Brimo in the centres. Like, JoJo's a gun. Yeah, I agree. I agree. As a matter of fact, I think they said that he clocked the fastest time at the Titans speed-wise over Cam Pereira. With Cam Pereira, wow. Mm, I think. That had to be confirmed. Confirm that. Um, yeah, look, Keenan Palacia, really interested to see like Titans fans watching him closely because he could be the guy that rounds out your forward pack that turns it from non-finals to finals. Really could be. Uh, the other one I'm keen to see, mate, and it's going to be a big year for him, Tony Staggs. He's a kangaroo centre now. <coughs> Expectations go up a notch for me, especially with Herbie leaving and whatnot. I really hope he just... Explodes. I know he had a big year last year, but I still think he's got another level to him. I do too. I do too. And also, you know, unless Selwyn's going to take on that workload of Herbie, Katoni's going to have to be that guy. Um, Yeah, I can't wait to see how he goes. Look, it's just sucks. Timoko, like, he was great last year. He's been one of your best outside backs for, what, two years now, you reckon? Yeah. Two years? And so he would just get more confident, more confident. He was... Started for New Zealand as well. Yeah, yeah awesome, for, awesome for the Kiwis. Yeah. So, like, again, if you're looking for strike outside backs, he, he may be your man heading into the new year. Kieran Mosley, the absolute staple of the uh, Indigenous All-Stars. So good, so good. Yeah, for you feeder, know, out ran um, Camparao. Whoa. So like, wow. He's a big boy too. He's not, he's not small. Jeez. Um, so, yeah, cannot wait for the All-Stars. We'll be watching it. And I'll be watching it on uh, KO, guys. Um now, Roosters, Joey Martin is set to leave the Roosters at the end of the season, most likely to play for French rugby. Uh, Billy Smith just re-signed, so it looks like he'll potentially take that spot and maybe even start the year, you know, if they're that high on him for 2027. Boys, thoughts on Joey Manu most likely leaving the Roosters? Yeah, disappointing to see him. I was really hoping we'd see him in the NRL at least. See him go to French rugby. It's a little bit disappointing. I'm willing to bet we see Manu back reasonably quickly, I reckon. Do you reckon Teddy retires Manu back? Yeah, potentially. I I personally don't think Joey's future is at fullback. I, I know that might be the unpopular opinion, but I don't think it is. Yeah. So you reckon – because I, I think that's part of the reason why he is going to go is because he wants to play fullback, but he doesn't want to play in another club. Yeah, which makes it tough. If I was the Roosters and when James Seska retires, I think I would go to the market to find a one personally. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, boys, Timmy, Joey Money. Yeah, agreed. I don't think fullback's his position. Um, good luck to him. He'd probably sign for an absolute mozza over there. I just love watching this bloke play footy so much. And it's, he's such a lost to our game. He's 27. I know. It's Feels like he's been around wild. forever. Uh, so, yeah, good luck to him. I, I wish he stayed in the NRL, even at another club. Again, I don't see him as a fullback. But I would have loved to see him go and try his hand at fullback at another NRL club. Like a full preseason under his belt at full... You know what yeah. I mean? Like a tr- training the whole time, getting yeah. any reps in. And, and that's it. And just the Roosters themselves, you look at... Interesting future for them. Joey Manu looks like he's likely leaving. So we'll let you go into next year. So their centres, all of a sudden they've got Billy Smith there who... Great prospect, re signed for another three or four years or something, but pretty horrific injury history. Leaves them, well, for next year, it'll leave them a little bit light on for centres. So we'll see where what they do with this money because they've all of a sudden got a fair bit to play with. I reckon they'll probably track, is it Toya? Robert Toya, yep. Mm. But I wouldn't be surprised if Tay- they make they have a crack at Taylor May. Wouldn't yeah, be surprised okay. because Terrell May, in deep talks with the dogs, yeah. that seems to have gone quiet. Is it because the Roosters have gone, Terrell, we can get your brother here. We've got the cash to do it. 
you could they can probably get Taylor and May on a little bit less because they can say, mate, you're going to come play with your brother. They can probably get both brothers on a little mm. bit less because that's what they've said. We want to play as brothers. Um, oh, look, right now, money on. I reckon they they probably get Taylor and May, and I don't, I don't have any information on that. I'm just speculating, but it seems like. The shoe fits. <laughs> the shoe fits massively. Yeah, and like him at the Roosters. I mean, I know the Penrith are unbelievable, but, you know, be, it'd be really interesting to see him in a different environment, see how he goes there. I can definitely see that playing out. Yeah. Uh, but when you've got guys like Toya coming through, it's like, do we spend the few hundred thousand on May or do we back our young fella in? Yeah, there's Toya and there's a few others there as well. So it'd be interesting to see what the Roosters do. And they've got options. Like if Toya does come through and kill it and he's their next centre, Tupu, is he signed to go overseas next year yet? Or, or what's. I'm not sure what. It's been very vague yeah, to my understanding vague. as to what he's going to be doing. Anyway, like back end of his career. So Taylor, we know, can obviously yeah. play on the wing as well. So True. they've got options. True. Uh, thoughts on money? Interesting, Joe Murray saying that if he goes to. When he goes to Union, it's not to, not to come back. So yeah, he said that. Clearly. Interesting. I, like I, I, my gut said he probably would at some stage, but he said, um, "I'm going over there to, to have a real crack at that." So, I'll tell you what, I, me personally, it's like you've done everything in the NRL, literally everything that you can do. So it's like get paid a million bucks to live in Europe. Mm. Yes, please. I uh, could not knock him one bit. Oh. They live in what, southern France, wherever he's lined up over there. Have the time of his life. And get also, paid a motto. He'll have. Seven runs a game, love and life. And also, you know, it's not like you're going and playing, you know, in front of four or five thousand people. Like mm. it's massive in Europe. Yeah. Like you're play, playing in world famous full stadiums in huge games. So you get to live in Europe on a million dollars a year. Like I almost feel like, what's the point of coming back? Like, yeah. what are you coming back oh. for? Immerse himself oh. in the food, wine, and je sais quoi over there. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And he's he's je ne sais quoi rating is quite high. Quite high. Probably why he got signed. Yeah. Joey, any chance to be eyeing off the 2027 Rugby World Cup? All Blacks? Maybe. Maybe. I, I know people are quite, um, oh, no, he'd never make the All Blacks. But it's like, hang on a sec. RTS made the All Blacks. Four and look, eight. I understand, I understand. like, he wasn't a like a main starter every week, RTS or whatever. But there's been other guys that have come from league and made the All Blacks. Didn't Duffy? A few, a few guys have come mm. from league to make the All Blacks. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. He'll be 31 years of age by then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sonny Bill, RTS. Love it. Brad Thorne. Brad Thorne. One of the greatest athletes all time. Doesn't get talked about enough what he did in both games. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy for Joey. I think he deserves it. He's been really patient. As, as I always say, stay patient. Good things come to you. It's have come to Joey Manu. Jenna St. Croix, crumpets, wine, <laughs> France, a million dollars. Trape, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Campbell Graham, Rabbitoh Centre, will undergo surgery next week to repair damage to his sternum. Which will see him sidelined for up to six months. Could be earlier than that. Uh, he played through the injury in 2023. Has trained throughout the preseason. However, decisions has been made to undergo surgery on the affected area. Graham is expected to be back on the field for South Sydney at the back end of the regular season. Spoke about this a little bit on Packer Up, boys. Uh, I've got to say, I wish I knew more information about this. Because if there was a chance that this could happen, I don't understand why they didn't just go bang. Surgery. As soon as the season ended last year, surgery, yes, he might miss round one or two and he, he has a bit of a lighter preseason, but, geez, that's better than missing the season. This, I just want to know what's happened here because clearly there's been a breakdown in communication. I can't for the life of me see the, the Rabbitohs going in to the doctors and the specialists and the specialists saying, oh, you, you, it might heal, but there's a chance it won't. Or you get the surgery and it definitely will heal and he'll be back good to go. Um, maybe the Rabbitohs were given the information that – it probably, like as in the surgery might also not heal. I don't know. I'd love to know more because it, it doesn't make sense. Completely agree with everything you just said. Would love more information because it doesn't quite add up in this situation. I can't see any NRL club if they walked in and would just give random numbers and they said, you don't have to get surgery because you don't want to have surgery, and there's a, but there's a 10% chance it might not heal. Even at 10%, I'm taking the surgery every day of the week. Uh, Timmy, your thoughts? Yeah, interesting how it played out. And I don't know, they were leading the comp after 11 rounds, they obviously saw a premiership window and then things started to go south for them very quick. Because the injury, did it happen like just before Origin? Because he was sort of in their talk in the Origin frame and then did he withdraw and set because oh, of... Oh, Freddie withdrew him because he couldn't train. Yeah, that's right, from Origin 1. Yeah. So I don't know. And then it just sort of went on a downward spiral from there for the bunny. So did they need him to keep playing and to get him into finals? Anyway, he's so gutted for him, especially putting his but name don't up. Don't you think it's surprising they didn't get the surgery as soon as the season ended? 
I, I don't know enough details about it, but on what we've seen and heard that he was injured last year, yeah, sure. Mm. Yeah, so got it for him. It was like round eight last year. I was sitting here going, he's the best centre in rugby league. Mm. And since then, literally nothing has gone right for him. Yeah, poor fella. Mm. Poor fella. Oh, too tough for his own good. Mm. Interesting uh, for the Bunnies now as well, where they go start of the season. Jackie White and suspended to round three or so. So unavailable for the first few rounds. Uh, Ty Munro sounds like he'll miss the first three or four weeks as well. That coming out this morning. And then Isaiah Tass slots in there somewhere. You know, even when. Like Jack primarily going to play on the left outside Cody. Tass would have played on at right centre. Tass has played more on the left in his career. What do they do there? All of a sudden, they're a bit light on in the outside backs, the Bunnies, very yeah. quickly. I'll tell you what, if I'm a young fella, I mean, here's your opportunity. Like, here is your chance to take it with both hands and just demand that centre spot. Because they may, looking at their depth, I'm going, okay, Tass comes into one centre, whitens out till th round three or four or whatever. Munro's out. Campbell Graham's out, so you would assume it's going to be a young fellow in that centre position. Well, or Tane Milne. Tane Milne, uh, Jacob Wings. Gagai. Jacob Gagai could get a start. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean. So Isaac Thompson. Like your, on the wing. So my point is, is that all of those guys aren't walking next no, up guys. Yeah. So if you're a young guy, 18 years old, you've been killing an SG ball, you've got three trials to go, hey, I'm, I'm the man for the job. Um, yeah, guy looks to be that guy yep. with that opportunity. Uh, you got like Richie Canars, another option they could mm. go for there as well. So, plenty of options there, but whoever it's going to be out of those guys, respectfully to them, just such a downgrade from Campbell Graham. Is it? Look, I'm being super, super nitpicky here. Super nitpicky. But, like, is it like a bit worrying that, like, this has happened and then the trial happens, they get towed up? Like, I don't know. It's just like there's a lot that's gone wrong, and I just. Do you get a bit like one of those – like, do they have a strong enough group at the moment to withhold that after what happened last year with everything that seems to be going wrong right now? And I'm being super nitpicky here, yeah. guys. It's not my opinion. It's a question I'm asking. Yeah, the injuries and stuff aren't great timing with that trial. I don't, I don't, I don't really give much about that trial, if I'm being honest, but I think they'll be okay. South Sydney. Okay, we'll ask you this question then. Would Penrith reserve grade side get pumped that big? No, they wouldn't. No. Well, it was almost like a third string side, wasn't it? It was very weak. Like, how many top 30 players were in that on the weekend? Not many. Oh, I'm at not all. sure. And look, uh, guys, I'm just playing devil, devil's advocate yeah. here. I'm not. I think Braden Burns, was he not captain from fullback? Yeah, he was captain. Yeah, yeah. so I wouldn't, I'd put a line through that completely. So Penrith would not have lost by that margin because Penrith are just a freak of a club at the moment. But yep. they are an exception to everyone. Okay. Okay. Do you reckon the Dolphins' side? get beat by that much I don't know who plays third string for the Dolphins <laughs> to be honest with you I, don't no, know. I, the, I, I, I get where you're coming from but the Dolphins no. played on the weekend the team that played on the weekend because that's essentially okay, equivalent ish that, yeah I, maybe I don't know I'm just playing devil's advocate <laughs> yeah. here guys I'm playing devil's advocate what do you think what do I think I, I think that you just can't look into that first trial because it was against the first grade side <laughs> But, Why did you just say that, you idiot? I tried to three <laughs> times. <laughs> but I will say the handling of the Campbell Graham thing is giving me a lot of concern. Yep. A lot of concern. That, that is like, to me, that's a warning sign that things, it may not be true, but it's a sign of things not being run correctly. Uh, again, I've said it, every time I've said this, that opinion on it, I've said if there's more information out there, I'm more than happy to come back on here and go, I was totally wrong. They found it got re-injured. They found something that was, you know, after it, blah, blah, blah. More than happy to do that. But for just the information we have, they knew he had that injury and the season ended. And this has happened in one of their key, essentially, origin players. When they also know that Whiten's not playing till round four, that's what concerns me the most. Not the trial. The trial doesn't concern Look, the trial concerns me in the, in the sense that they're clearly not on the level of a Penrith Panthers. I don't think that would happen to a Penrith Panthers. Um, oh, you know what? It's hard to say that because the Eels towed the Panthers up a couple of years ago in a trial mm. and it was a stronger side for the Panthers. So maybe I'm being too harsh here. So, yeah, trials are relevant to me. Just that Campbell Graham thing, that's, that's a bit concerning for me. Would you say it's time for the rubber to hit the road at Redfern? Look, we'll see. Round one. That's when the rubber does hit the road. Mm. <laughs> um, 
in, look, put it this way. If the Rabbitohs made a prelim last year and it was just like, yep, normal, all good, I wouldn't even – this was just an unfortunate thing that happened in the rugby league. It's just the fact that with everything that happened last year, you, you start looking at things a little bit differently. Um, but I still – you know, we did our season preview. Even with all this information, I still have – Rabbitohs in the top four, if not top four, top five. I still have him as a premiership threat this year. I really do. As do I. Yep. 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 Same. Yep. The coaches did a survey and basically asked, you know, the biggest questions. Um, for example, coaches survey, uh, what is the biggest issue in the game? 23% of the coaches said player managers, 20% player, assist, player transfer system, 20% concussion, 13% said officiating uh, slash bunker, 13% said uh, junior participation. Uh, 3% said rival codes. Uh, so this was a survey done by the Daily Telegraph, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know what? Now, now, maybe there's a bias there because of player managers. But I tell you what. And look, there, there are good, good and bad in every industry that you go in. So there's always a bad eggs, there's good eggs, whatever. But I do think we need to make sure that we have a very clear-cut system of how player managers work within the game, like the the game. Uh, like little things like, and look, maybe there are rules and it's very hard to find. maddie has been searching high and low to see this, how it's all set up. But like even little things like, if you break a contract, you should not be able to sign a contract that is bigger than the contract that you're on. Things like that, that I think that need to be sorted. So I, I, I tend to agree in most cases in the player managers. As I said, there's doesn't mean they're all bad at all. There's, there's some really, really good player managers, but there are also ones that sometimes their interests don't align with what is good for the player. Um, player transfer system, been saying it for ages. I do think that, that we need to look at that. Uh, now, the, the, the other side of the player transfer system is that by not having a player transfer system, we're talking about rugby league essentially all year because people are going everywhere. But I do think the hype that we could create by putting in certain windows would be really good. Uh, concussion, we know that's going to be a big concern essentially going forward. I, I love the next one. That there's all these major issues in the game and 13% of coaches are still like refereeing. <laughs> Got to sort the referee. Yeah. The refs. Uh, now, next expansion, next location for expansion. This is the, the refs that, uh, sorry, not the refs, the coaches that answer this. 50% said Perth, 50%. Perth Pirates, here we Perth come. Perth Pirates, there we go. Perth Bears. Um, New Zealand, uh, 23%, 10% PNG. 7% said no more PNG teams, 3% said Pacific, 7% said other. Should players be granted exemptions for short-term contracts in rival codes? 77% said no. 23% said yes. What? I wonder who those coaches were. Reveal yourself. Yeah. You charlatans. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> does the NRL consult coaches enough? 93% said no, they do not consult coaches enough. And 3% said prefer not to answer. Someone's scared of the big dogs coming down. And it was, it was a anonymous, wow. And then 3% said yes, I would love to know which coach said that they do consult them enough. That would be really interesting. Wayne? Wayne? Wayne. No way. <laughs> uh, do coaches get enough support from the NRL? 87% said no. 10% said Yes, and 3% preferred not to answer. This poor bloke, he's scared for his life. It's Kenny <laughs> Walters. <laughs> oh, oh, Kenny how dare sure. you, how dare you. Should player ag agents be allowed to manage both players and coaches? 50% said yes, 50% said no. Uh, which team other than yours do you think will play in the grand final? Wow, so this is, this is coaches that answered this. So which team other than yours do you think will play in the grand final? 28% said Roosters. 28% said Broncos. 24% said the Penny Panthers. 11% said Knights, uh, sorry, not sure. And 3% all said Warriors, not Sharks. I would say not sure. Not yeah, sure. Was an answer. And a, a rewording of prefer it's not the same to say. guy that was too scared to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. He's just shitting himself constantly. Someone <laughs> just didn't fill out the survey. Yeah. He just went not sure, not sure, not yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, far out. Uh, what happened there? Uh? Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, at what time should the NRL Grand Final be played? 57% said afternoon. 40% uh, said twilight. Clearly twilight fans. Uh, and 3% <laughs> said evening. <laughs> Jake or uh, Ed? I haven't actually seen it, but still appreciated where the pun was coming from. Okay. So, you? 
You're you're a wolf or a vampire man. Also, I haven't seen it. What the fuck is wrong with you, blokes? Wolf or vampire man? Uh, I saw the first one. Wolf for sure. Oh, way cooler. No. Vampires are lame. Wow, that's some. That's like vampire uh, you, phobia. Prefer not to say. Would be <laughs> 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 Who is the best coach in the NRL? This is the other coaches that voted this. Ivan Cleary at 40%. Kevin Walters, 27%. Craig Bellamy, 13%. Wayne Bennett, 13%. Brett Arthur, 7%. And then the rest was other. So it must have been this year. Yeah, in what world is Kevin Walters twice as good as Bennett and Bellamy on the, on well, the I mean, scale? Well, surely, I mean, surely Bennett and Bellamy are, should be number yeah. one. I know, I, like, Ivan Cleary is definitely getting into those areas for sure. Be interesting to revisit that next year and see how far Benji Marshall's won by. <laughs> <laughs> State of origin eligibility rules. Change to allow Tier 1 nations. 93% said they don't want changes uh, to allow Tier 1 nation players to play. Um, that actually surprised me, that one. I thought they'd be a bit more open to seeing the eligibility rules changed. Um, only 7% uh, said yes. Uh is there a rule change you'd like to see? 30% said no rule changes. Seven tackle, uh, 13% said seven tackle set. 12% said other. 3% said that's a whole bunch of shit I'm not going to read. <laughs> um, which player, 23 years old or younger, would you build a team around? This one's Toei stuff. <laughs> Tino Toei Fa'asu Alawi. He is rated 50%. So 50% of the NRL coaches would build a club Jeez. around him. Holy, Talk, my head wouldn't fit through the door if I read that <laughs> if I was Tino. Um, 20% said Dylan Brown. 10% said Reese Walsh. 7% said Stefano Ikutukamanu. Yeah. <laughs> Someone vote twice at the Tigers. <laughs> 3% said Stephen Crichton. Ezra Mam at 3% also. Jerome Buller at 3%, other 4%. This season, which recruit will have the biggest impact? 17% each, Flegler, White and Brooks. 13% each, Crichton, Farmworth. 7% each, Young, Olam, Capewell. And then 3%, Spencer Linu. Uh, uh, only 33% believe the NRL referee's bunker should be front of the media after games. So only 33% of coaches reckon that the media should um, front the... Uh, sorry, the rest should front the media. 53% rated the quality of officiating 4 out of 5. And 43% gave the match officials a 3. 67% uh, want a standalone origin test period during the season. Wow. Here you go, boys. Must be listening to the podcast. On to it. All right. Don't 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 kill me with your energy, boys. <laughs> I'm getting absolutely swamped here with energy. A lot of data to take in there. I thought it was, I thought I made it entertaining. A lot of, you did. did I feel like I was one of those school teachers that were like the cool guy making it entertaining, but clearly not. Boys nearly fell asleep there. Uh, anyway, hopefully the uh, the audience enjoyed it. Now, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed your takes on it all, Kim. Oh, I really did. Wow. Seriously, sometimes I don't know why I even try. <laughs> um, don't forget, guys, could be anything merch. Monday, 6 p.m. New South Wales time, limited supply, brand new designs, brand new material, high, high quality stuff. I promise you guys, when you get it out of the bag, you are going to be impressed. It is like seriously good stuff. Also got the hats as well, limited. Uh, follow SC Playbook One Instagram, Rugby League Guru, Hammy Goodman. Is it Handsome Hammy G. Handsome Hammy G. Word. All one word yep. on Instagram. Unfollow Matty if you follow him. <laughs> and as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.